Sports Channel's Metro College Game of the Week. Hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Landers, along with Dave Jennings on a cool, clear afternoon here. And Dave, the Redmen are on a roll. Coming off the big victory last week, 65 points. They're Liberty Conference champs, and they have a great passing attack, as we'll see today. We talk about St. John's. They're a big play team, and their big play concerns their quarterback, Scott Sesney, to Dennis McDermott, the wide receiver. They've been hitting that play big all year, and I'm sure we're going to see it today. On the other side, the CW Post Pioneers have been disappointing offensively. Their story has been defense. They've only given up about 10 points a game, and today that defense will be sorely tested. How are they going to stop Scott Sesney and Dennis McDermott? Well, I think that their thinking is that they've got to get to the quarterback, Scott Sesney. It's tough to double-team Dennis McDermott. He's very quick, has good feet, but John Lavellis up front, Chris Russo, the defensive lineman, they're going to have to put pressure on Sesney for Post to have a good chance to win this ball game. So the stage is set for this afternoon showdown. Should be a dandy. We'll be back with more college football on Sports Channel. Sports Channel's Metro College Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Apple Bank. Apple Bank for savings. We're good for you. I wonder if I can get... Right now, let's go down to the field, and here's Matt Lachlan. All right, Barry, thank you very much. Now, we focused, and rightfully so, on the explosiveness of the St. John Redmond squad and their outstanding senior quarterback, Scott Sesney. Sesney is having a magical year. He's thrown for nearly 1,500 yards. He's thrown 21 touchdown passes, and he's coming off a great game. Last week, in the 65-45 win by St. John's over Kings Point, he threw for 378 yards and six touchdown passes. He garnered ECAC Players of the Week honors, Liberty Conference. Player of the Week honors, but he also received national attention in this week's edition of Sports Illustrated, along with Herschel Walker on the cover. Scott says he was named the National Small Schools Player of the Week. So as the attention gets greater, so too does the pressure. It'll be interesting to see how Sesney responds to the pressure that's placed on his shoulders. One factor to consider, Barry, is the wind. It's normally windy here at Redmond Field, but it's a little brisker than normal. The wind will be blowing from our viewers left to the right as they watch the game, and it's a stiff breeze. It will affect the passing game. With the wind at their backs, the passes will be crisp, they'll be hard thrown, and they can air it out pretty far. However, when we go against the wind, It'll be difficult for the players because it is a brisk breeze and it will affect the passing game. No question about it. In warm-ups, you could see how it was affecting the passes. They were just dying after about 20 yards or so. So the wind will be a factor today. Back upstairs to you, Barry. Thank you very much, Matt. So we're just about ready to go. And Dave, the wind factor, as you see, Bob Ricker, will certainly be a factor. The former star at CW Post. What, what about some keys in terms of uh, the rushing attack of uh, this fine uh, team from uh, the island, from CW? Post. They've rushed very effectively. Dave Shanahan, one of the leaders in the country. Can St. John stop their running of CW Post? Well, I think if they're going to stop them, they should pull out the, the game films from last week when Post played played Iona. And Iona did a great job on, on the St. John's offense stopping the running game. What they did is their outside linebackers were able to, to cause some problems. I'm talking about the Iona outside linebackers. And it really caused some problems. Did not allow Shanahan to turn the corner. Only had 54 uh, yards. And one thing, you know, two things to look for right now. From from St. John's point of view, they have gotten off to big starts in a lot of their games this year. They've scored a bunch of points, and that's really helped. On the other side of, of the ball post, one thing that's hurt them in their two losses, they've really beaten themselves. Turnovers, interceptions, and, and, and uh, penalties. Serious record as far as these clubs. This is the fifth meeting, and Post with the lead, three games to one. Last year, St. John's jumped off to an early 14-0 lead, led 21-7 at the half, and Post roared back behind Jeff Doyle and Steve DiArpa. What a big uh, game rushing he rushed for 186 yards in that game, and Post went on to win at 29-21. Wouldn't be surprised to see DiArpa today, as you said, had the big uh, big game last year. A look at our officials, uh, the crew led by referee Joe Coley. And we're just about ready to go. Here are temperatures in the 50s. 
As post will be kicking off, St. John's will be going from right to left. Actually, what happened on the uh, toss was St. John's won and deferred for the second half. Post elected to take the win, and they'll be kicking off right now with the win. And that wind is going to be a big factor as you look at the field right now. The, the, the wind is going from left to right. It's very strong. So as St. John's takes the ball, they are going to be going in with strong wind. And, you know, I was talking to some of the coaches before the game, some of the officials. The wind is something you can't see. You can't see the wind. So you really, uh, oftentimes as a fan or a viewer, you don't get a good chance to be able to judge how strong that wind is. But I think as this game progresses, you're going to be able to see just how strong it is and what kind of an effect it does have on it. Passing game. The deep bet for St. John's, Kevin Conway, 44, who has averaged 24 yards, and Manny Tassanis, number 33, who's averaged over 21 yards. And the kicker's Guy Asori as we're underway. Short kick upfield. It'll be coming down at around the 19-yard line and run back across the 30 to around the 35-yard line. Where it'll be about first and 10 for the St. John's Redmen as they return it as Kevin Holland returns it to the 37-yard line. Where it'll be first and 10. The offensive line for the St. John's Redmen has done a superb job all year. They've allowed only five sacks. And the backfield, led by Scott Sesney, of course, the brilliant quarterback, Manny Tassantis, and Dennis McDermott. <laughs> Redmen, as uh, you pointed out, they've been an explosive club in the first quarter. They work out of the eye formation. Antwoods is the fullback. And on the first play, it looks like a mix-up in the backfield. Taken down for a loss will be quarterback Scott Sesney, as they had problems on that one. And John Lavellis in the backfield greeted him. Scott Sesney's number is quite impressive, David. I guess the biggest thing, the lack of interceptions, only four interceptions all year. You get a quarterback who throws that well and only throws four interceptions. He's only had four interceptions, 21 touchdowns. It's a big weapon. And uh, again, his big key is McDermott. He's down at the bottom of the screen right now. He's being double covered. Second down at long yardage here, 13. Long count by Scott Sesley. On the draw play, Manny Tessantis as he tries to go outside to the 38-yard line. That'll be a pickup of around four as he's brought down, and it'll be third and long. The tackle made by James Buckner. Look at the defense for Post. That front four awfully tough, led by Lavellis and Russo. Number 99, you see him right there, John Lavellis. The linebacker's good, particularly the inside people, Johnny Hogan and James Mimnor. And the secondary, led uh, by Tim McAtee and Paul Engelhardt. Engelhardt will have his hands full with McDermott. Again, they go on the draw play and nothing doing as they get to the 41-yard line and post defense on the first series stops him. Manny Tassantis, the carrier, and Ali Shama, number 97, the nose tackle, brought him down. So Anthony Tricario will come in to do the punting, number 14. He's improved in that area. Last year, he averaged about 35 yards a kick. This year, 40, and he's punting into a very strong win. Standing back and around the 25-yard line. Art Nelback at the 30, awaiting the kick. Post coming, but he gets a pretty good kick away into the win. Nelback calling for a fair catch at around the 31-yard line, where Post will put it in play first and 10. 29-yard kick, no return, and the Pioneers take over. You, you can see the wind right there it was a, a pretty good kick, but when it got up there, it just held right up. Back to the receivers uh, for the uh, Post Pioneers. Rob DeLillo will not be starting. Brett Curtis will be starting in the game. Steve DeArpa. And we look at the offensive line over there. Fitzroy Thomas. Pete Porcelli, the big guy in the middle. And, of course, Richie Carroll will be at one of the guard spots. DeLillo now is in the starting lineup. Jeff Doyle to throw on first down. Incomplete. As the pass intended out there for Bobby Schroeder. And a look at Jeff Doyle's stats, which have been very disappointing this year, only completing 35.4% of his passes and only 27 completions and one touchdown pass. So on second and 10, Schroeder lines up wide to the left, working out of the eye formation. Handoff going to number 26, and with the ball is Dave Shanahan, short pickup. St. John's uh, defensive line stopping him. A look at the St. John's defense. Kenny Cobb, the big guy, the nose guard in the middle. And the linebackers, Pete Majeski and Scott Beider, the tough inside people. And a secondary led by Johnny Krug and Kevin Conway, who has seven interceptions so far this year. 
40, let's call it about eight. Steve DeArpa in the ball game now, lining up as the tailback. Pass! Pass! Throw rolling left, pass protection. Now throws on the run, it is going to be incomplete on the far sideline. Bobby Schroeder, the intended receiver. However, there is a flag on the play. When Bobby Schroeder was wide open and was watching the St. Uh, John's, <clears throat> it appears we're going to have an illegal man downfield against post, which should be refused, but that time Schroeder was pretty much wide open. They had a slot formation to the left side and were playing in very loose. Schroeder went downfield, was, was being covered very loosely, and uh, again, we've talked about rolling out to your left, throwing back to your right. Well, the penalty declined, as you saw. So it sets up a fourth down play, and Tim McEntee will be doing the punting. We had expected to see Mike Manzella doing the punting. McEntee came in last week in a substitution role and did very well, kicking for about 36 yards. Flags fly all over the place right now. And let's wait for the officials to make the call. Manzella hurt his knee in the Stony Brook game, did not punt last week, and uh, Tim McEntee came and did the job. Now, keep in mind one thing. As we got the five-yard penalty against Post for a foul start. Keep, keep in mind one thing. He is punting now with the wind, but his center is snapping the ball into the wind. So that ball could float back. There could be a knuckleball. Let's take, take a look at it here. It float. McAtee will shank it. Not particularly a good kick coming up to the 45-yard line where a fair catch is called by Kevin Conway where St. John's will put in uh, first and 10 at the 46-yard line. Excellent position. 27-yard kick with the wind. Not a very good one. You know, we're going to talk about the wind a lot. When you have the wind at your back and post does now, that's when you want to do some things offensively. Uh, St. John's, of course, would like to score some points, but if they can get out of this first quarter relatively even with this wind, uh, they'll be in good shape. Redmond now will send out Anthony Amalfitano as a flanker. Now they've mixed up in the backfield. McDermott will line up, and I think timeout taken by St. John's. All sorts of confusion in the backfield, and Scott Sessie will come over to talk things over with Dutch Outerkirk, the offensive coordinator, and Bob Ricca. Well, you can see that uh, Amalfitano and, and McDermott were not lined up on the right side. <laughs> Again, that's not a that's not a strategy timeout. That was just a timeout taken by Sesney. Especially when you're going into the wind, you've got to take those timeouts when you're confused. You don't want to take that five yard penalty because it's uh, it's very difficult to gain yardage. And you notice on that first drive that on uh, on all three plays there was one busted play. But St. John's ran three times going into the wind. Uh, also, keep an eye uh, on that man Sesney, but keep an eye on number 26, Dennis McDermott. He's the receiver that uh, number 10 is looking for on the other side of the ball. Keep an eye on number 99, John Lavellis. Where is he going to be? Right now, he's lined up on the right side of the defensive line. Don't be surprised to see him uh, move around. On first and 10, again, double coverage for McDermott at the bottom of your picture. Four man front. Here's the pitch and a reverse coming back. Flea flicker play. Sesney looking downfield. Will screen it out and Manny Tassantis could not hang out of the ball. It'll go as an incompletion. It's a little razzle dazzle early here and the incompletion there. McDermott was running down the field on the left side, but he was covered, so you, you know the post is very aware of Dennis McDermott. Uh, it's, it's also key, as, as we talked about early in the game, St. John's big strength and big plays. A lot of big plays, and that's what they'd like to have. Again, he's been double teamed. We're talking about McDermott, the wide receiver. He's been double teamed a lot today. You'll see him get off the ball. There's the short coverage, now the deep coverage. But by that time, the, the ball had been thrown over on the right side of DeSantis. Back to live action, second and ten. On the draw play, DeSantis looking to turn it outside. Picks up about six before he was brought down by middle linebacker James Mimnow, setting up a third and about four. You know, one thing about DeSantis is not only is he a good runner, but he's a good receiver out of the backfield. And very often, he's got 20 receptions. He's a third leading receiver this year, but very often what they will do is they will trail him behind McDermott. McDermott will clear them some things out, and DeSantis will follow in. Third and four for the Redmond. McDermott again comes down at the bottom of your picture. Anthony Amalfitano is a flanker to the top. Well, 
time. Third and four call here for Scott Sesney. And again, the draw play to Cassandra. Slips the tackle, but will go down. John Lavella's got a piece of him in the backfield. And he was able to trip him up. It'll be a fourth down play. Great play by Lavellas, and then Schaefer came in and finished it up. So right now, Post is doing exactly what they'd like to do. Uh, the wind is helping them in the sense that St. John's doesn't feel comfortable, at least right now, throwing the ball. They've stopped him twice, and they're doing the job. First punt for Tricario was uh, 29 yards. This will be a second coming up. Standing back at the 35-yard line. Nelback is back at around the 15. The line drives that one. It'll bounce on the turf. And Nelback will let it bounce inside the 15. It'll blow dead at around the 11-yard line. That's one way to get distance on a punt is to kick a line drive kick. And a line drive kick will cut through the wind. However, if the returner can catch that line drive kick, he's got a lot of more room to work with because a line drive kick has no hang time. At that time, Nelback could not come up and make the catch. And, and St. John's is, is in good defensive field position right now. Now uh, they've got 89 yards to protect. Post has not been able to pass the ball effectively this year. Only 90 yards passing a game. They have run effectively, and that's been part of the problem. They've run for over 200 yards a game. Steve DeArpa the ball game with Rob DeLillo in the backfield. This is DeArpa, and he stood right up and shoved back, and a uh, good defensive play by Pete Mayeski, number 34. Well, Mayeski, the inside linebacker, just came in and filled that hole, and, you know, sometimes players do well against certain teams, and last year, as you said, DeArpa had the big game against St. John's, so he's in there right away. Uh, the previous four weeks, three of them, Shanahan had big game, but last week only 54 yards. Shanahan had games of 197 yards, 235, and 208. That's an awful lot of football. Maybe he was catching up to him. Had a shoulder problem during the week. Did not practice all the time. On the draw, Diarpa again. Bounced around. Will not get much. Maybe a yard as he stopped it around the 15-yard line. Brought down by Scott Biter, number 57. Setting up a third down play. Now one thing one of my former coaches has always said, and that's Joe Parcells, you play up here in the Northeast, you have to be able to run the ball. If you don't run the ball, you can't play well, because late in the year, and this is not really late in the year, but the conditions get worse and worse for that passing game. Third and seven situation here for Jeff Doyle. Pass! Put your pass now! Doyle with time. Plenty of time now. Looking for short. Overthrows it. Travis Oselmo was defending on the play, but Jeff Doyle's had his problems. As we mentioned, only a 35% completion. Now 0 for 3 this afternoon. And very often when you're throwing with the wind, as number 11 Jeff Doyle was to try to get it to Bob Schroeder, the wind will kind of carry that ball. And here Schroeder just runs a post pattern and is open. But see how the ball is high? And that's just because the wind has a habit of carrying it when you're throwing with the wind. Second kick for McAtee. He kicked only 27 yards first time. This one a little better. Up to the 45-yard line. McDermott trying to turn down the sideline. And taken down at around the 30-yard line. About a 25-yard turn return for Dennis McDermott. We saw him in the opening game break one against Iona for a long touchdown. He did. And he's, uh, he, he can do it all. He's very quick. He's very fast. But Tom Marshall didn't like that very much. But on a punt return, you get outside. Uh, you get towards the sideline. And you've got a lot of room to work with because there's always one player on either side who is responsible for contain. Let's go quickly down on the field. And Matt Lachlan. All right, Barry, thank you very much. Coming off the field last series, Scott Sesney said, it's a new ball out there. It's slippery. It's got some oil on it because it is new. He's having trouble gripping it. That's why he's had some troubles in the early going. Back to you, Barry. First down for the Redmen. Excellent field position here trying to go up in this scoreless game with 9.04 to go in the opening quarter. Sesney over the middle behind Holland, who is open. And will go now as a second down play. Scott Sesney looking a little bit upset with himself right there. Well, I tell you, you could see that uh, the post uh, changed their defensive scheme as soon as McDermott went in motion. The two players moved right out with him. And they're going to double team him right now. He has not, it's very early. has not been a factor. Interesting point, though, by Scott Sesney. New footballs are always a lot tougher. It can be tougher to grip, especially a very, even though it's been wet this week, today is dry with that wind and it makes it more difficult to grasp that football. Jason Miller in the ball game is a wide receiver replacing Anthony Malfitano. They'll be alternating with the plays from the sidelines. Pro set in the backfield on second and ten. Again, they stay on the ground. Tassantis will not get much as he gets inside the 30, maybe to the 29-yard line. Brought down by Chris Russo, the 265-pounder, who is their leading tackler with a total of 47. 
One thing Post has said early, we're going to take away McDermott. We're going to try to take away McDermott by double teaming him. Beat us with a run if you can. If you can't, we've done the job so far. They're winning this one in terms of shutting out McDermott. And St. John's has not moved the ball so far. And Post defense has given up less than 200 yards a game in the six games they've played. Now let's see if Cessny goes to the air on third down. Got right formation. Center of the motion now is McDermott. Still has double coverage. Cessny could run for the first down here. Let's see if he can get there. Dives to the marker. Did he get it? He Maybe short. He's short. He dove and he dove short. And as you pointed out at the beginning, again, McDermott double covered, but that always leaves something open. I would believe St. John's will go for it here because it's a very short, I mean, it could, it's about six or seven inches, it appears, from our angle up here. Or maybe more like a foot, but uh, Bob Rick right there, he's, <laughs> he's ain't died for that first down, but he didn't get it. So I'm sure you'll, I would, would be surprised if his name was just a run up the middle on the team. Fourth and inches for the Redmen. Maybe he'll keep it. <laughs> Looks like he may have gotten it, reaching forward with his 6-3 frame and may have gotten to the 21-yard line, which should be enough for the first down. John Lavellis on the stop. It is a first down for St. John. Now, interestingly enough about Scott Sesson, we've talked about his passing, but two years ago when St. John's won against both their only victory, he ran for two touchdowns and played a key role in his running. Tom Marshall, he's saying, no, that wasn't a first down. Is he saying that? <laughs> Well, his defense has been outstanding all year. Now they're pressing the ball at the first and 10 of the 21 yard line. Sassy looking deep for McDermott. He's out there. 22nd touchdown pass of the year from Scott Sesney. And for Dennis McDermott, his 36th career touchdown, 15th reception for a touchdown this season. Well, that time it was it was almost a single coverage. Paul Engelhardt, who was the corner on that side, uh, had help from the safety to the inside, but didn't seem to want to play it there. And McDermott just ran down, gave him the post move, and ran back to the corner where Engelhardt did not have help. And Sesney <laughs> Put up there for another touchdown pass to Dennis McDermott. Tricario to try the extra point. He's missed two of his last three. 33 out of 36 on the year. Ball down the kick in the air, and it is good. So St. John's with 7 or 8 to go in the opening quarter strikes first. And a familiar combination, Scott Sessney to uh, Dennis McDermott giving uh, Tom Marshall some concern early. And again, from here, it appeared that there wasn't that double coverage on McDermott that we have seen throughout the game. You're going to see McDermott run downfield. He'll run towards the post. Well, you may not see. He's at the right of the screen. And then he goes to the corner, and Sessney just floats it up there. Now, you can see Engelhardt chasing him. He has, Engelhardt, number 34, has help to the inside, but he doesn't have help to the outside, so he's got to play it more to the outside. See the Tim Mac McEntee up in the top. There's his help inside, but no help. Now here goes McDermott post, and then he sells it coming back to the corner, and then it's not in position. I'll tell you, they run that fade pattern about as well as anybody. Well, we've got a break in the action. Excuse me, Dave. We'll be right back. You're watching College Football. When it comes to commercial lending, Apple means business. Apple's committed to serving Long Island's business needs. Our staff of professionals are experienced in all aspects of commercial banking to help Long Island's business. Whether your business is large or small, our experts will provide prompt, practical solutions to your company's financial requirements. Apple Bank's commitment guarantees our commercial customers the most effective banking service available. Apple Bank for savings, we're good for you. We're back at Redmond Field and St. John striking early a 22-yard touchdown pass. Scott Sesson to Dennis McDermott and the Redmen have a 7-0 lead. I'll tell you that, uh, you know, you talk about one of the patterns which St. John's likes to use is the fade pattern, which wasn't quite that, but the, again, it's an outside pattern which McDermott is so successful. And that time it was the post corner where he sold the post move and that time Engelhart went for it, but he had help inside so he shouldn't have been on it so much. And that's when uh, McDermott went back 
to the outside. And uh, we talked about it in the opening. I mean, no surprise. Not like we're telling you anything that uh, <laughs> is a surprise. But uh, Sesney to McDermott, that's the first pass they tried, and it was good. Tricario to kick off. Brett Curtis, 21, and Stanley Dwight, 40, are the deep men. Curtis will have trouble handling the ball, and it goes out of bounds. He touched it, and post pinned deep in their own territory around the eight-yard line. And I'll tell you something. He had Brett Curtis was kind of caught in a dilemma right there. He wasn't sure if it was going out of bounds or not, so he went for it, couldn't handle it, knocked it out of bounds. And the drive for St. John's, 32 yards, five plays, under two minutes. McDermott, 22-yard pass from Cessna. They've been opportunists all year, taking advantage of field position and turnover. And also look at the last time that the post took over the ball, they had it on their own 11, this time on their own eight-yard line. And they have the wind in their favor. Now, out of the eye formation, Diarpa is the tailback. DeLillo is the fullback. The call goes to DeLillo. Tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. He fell forward as they got some good penetration. Frank Palowski, number 63, getting in quickly and breaking up the play. One thing I know that CW Post would like to do today defensively is keep their offense on the field. Because if their offense is on the field, they like to generate some long drives, even if they don't score, because that keeps the St. John's offense off the field. So far, Post hasn't done that. The Post offensive line, much bigger than St. John's defense. They average about 270 yards. 270 pounds or so. Second and long. Doyle on the draw play, giving to the Arpa. Trying to turn it outside. Nice cutback, still on his feet. And it'll be driven down at around the 13, 14 yard line. Scott Biter on the gang tackle over there, along with uh, Rich Colangelo, 57 and 56. Notice the post is running a lot to the right side. That's where the strength is. It had some injuries over on the left side, and it's caused some problems. Tom Marshall's had to do some juggling there. So he, he's told that left side, we're not going to run that that much behind you but just do your job cutting off the pursuit right side you guys are our power guys especially Fitzroy Thomas a tight end block it out now they switch Thomas over to the left side in this third and five situation looking out of the pro set of the backfield running back split Doyle with time looking for receiver has Schroeder open at the 30 yard line slammed down by Kevin Conway but enough for a first down as well had all sorts of time to spot that receiver. Gave himself some time. Schroeder coming across the field to the ball and did a great job holding on to the ball. We do have a flag on the field back where uh, the ball was thrown from. It appears though St. Johnson. Watch Schroeder come across the field and he makes a great reception because he's running this way. Watch him turn around to catch the ball and then get hit. Turns around, catches it, bang, and hits the ground. Great job, great concentration holding on to the ball. Good job by Schroeder. Good pattern, good hands. <laughs> They're talking to the referee over there. Penalty is against St. John's. The wiggliness of the hands. Defense. Penalty refused. First down. Joe Coley with the call. So the post pioneer is getting out of some trouble. Now the ball up at around the 29. Joe's not giving us the numbers. Remember we got the numbers last week? From the official who the referee was doing the game at uh, between Hofstra and Wagner. By the way, Hofstra has a tough one today against Kings Point. And Rory Moss is hurt. Will not play in that game. We should have some scores on some of the other games. Doyle on the pitch. This is the Arpa behind DeLillo. DeLillo, a nice block, allowing the Arpa to turn it outside. Has the first down, cuts back, and gains about 14 yards. I'll tell you, Glenn Crowley, who was a left tackle, had somebody I couldn't catch the number for St. John's buried. And that's one of the keys to successful running is, is just getting your blocks. Now, 53, he's on the left side of the screen. He's a left tackle. Let's see who he picks up. He's already down. There he is. Look at that. Look. See that? <laughs> Scott Biter went down that time. Great job by uh, by Glenn Crowley, the left tackle. And DeLillo also helping out with the block. So they pick up another first down, second in a row, and Post has moved the ball effectively the last two plays. The up again. DeLillo trying to give him a block, but look at that defensive play by Vince O'Grady. Vince O'Grady filling in uh, very well for the injured Phil Bacchetti. Bacchetti we saw early on in the season uh, hurt his knee this year, and O'Grady coming up. And talk about great tackling. You want to wrap them up, and you'll see you see a lot of NFL players do not make good tackle. Look at this. Just wrap them up with both hands. Hold on. Great job. That's a great tackle right there. He's only a sophomore, that young man. 
So it's second down and long right here. Pioneers trailing 7 0, 305 to go first quarter. St. John's coming in 6 0, post 4 and 2. Doyle to the sideline to Schroeder, should have had it. And it goes as an incompletion. Travis Oselmo was uh, the defender. And Schroeder knows that he's just going to walk back to the huddle and he'll next time he'll catch the ball with his hands. You know, in defense of Jeff Doyle's poor effort last week, I think he was 5 for 26. They dropped a lot of passes. We've seen a couple drops here today. Of course, you know, some people say they ought to have a column in the quarterback rating for drops. Well, yes, if they're going to have a, in a column for drops, they ought to have one also for outstanding impossible catches that these young receivers do make on occasion. Third and ten for the Pioneers. Doyle is one for five to 15 yards. Straight to the upper. Doyle rolling. Keeps it and will try to get the first down with that second effort. It'll be close, but I think he's a little bit short. Appears to be short, and again, I think Post would go for it with a win at their back in their running game. That time it appeared as though it was a design rollout, and it was designed for uh, Doyle to run the ball because uh, when he one of his receivers downfield was blocking as Doyle was running out, but uh, it looks as though Post is going to... Uh, they've got their punt team on the field. Okay. Back at the uh, third punt, Conway, uh, Conway having trouble, so it'll be picked up wisely by Dennis McDermott at the 15-yard line. Look like they quick punted there. Well, you see, I thought the post was going to go for it. That's, I'm sure, what the thinking of St. John's was. Post said, get the team on quickly. Maybe we'll get 12 guys on the field. There appeared to be a 12th man for St. John's running off the field. Sometimes in those situations, if the player is trying to get off the field, the official will not call it because the intent of the rule is not to uh, penalize a team if the guy is trying to get off the field. If you got 12 guys in the defense, then they're going to call it. 32-yard punt, no return. Of course, we saw a costly penalty hurt Wagner in a punting situation last week. And they lost to Hofstra. First and ten for the Redmen. Steve Smolich in the ball game now. Nose tackle number 78. And again, they'll stick on the ground. This time the fullback getting the call. It'll be a short game. And as Ann Pyle, Scott Kantrowitz is the ball carrier. Just a freshman from Yonkers. Hasn't carried very much. That was only his uh, 12th rush of the season. You know, I have been out of college that long, but seeing some of these kids on the field, they look so young. Do I look that old? That's no, just your receding hairline, Dave. <laughs> I just have a large part, that's all. St. John's leading 7 nothing as Sesame marks out the signals. DeSantis trying to get away in the background from James Mimnall, but he cannot. Mimnall, the linebacker, coming in and taking down DeSantis for a big loss. St. John's going with a flow to the right, but coming back with a counter to the left. And Mimnall was not fooled. He read it perfectly. You see, a little flow to the right there, but then he comes back on the counter. Look at Mimnall in there. And Post, uh, they're doing a pretty good job right now. Scotty report on Mimnall said he reads quickly, and he read that one quickly. He's the number two tackler on the team. Third and long here. There's about nine. They'll stay on the ground here. Not much there for Scott Kantrowitz as they stayed on the ground with the fullback. And the freshman picks up about three. Now there are 47 seconds left, so if they've been able to hold on to the ball, they might have been able to punt with the win. Now they're going to be forced Dave, to punt into the win. As Tricario standing back at around the five, so Post should come out of this with excellent field position. Look where the deep man is for Post. He's only on the 45. He's 25 yards away from the line of scrimmage. High snap. He'll have to get it off quickly. Tricario floats it out there. No back. It'll bounce back. It bounce, but St. John's wisely covering Conway getting downfield quickly. And Post will put the ball in play at the 39 or 38. This is what the wind does for you. Generally speaking, offensive teams do not move well into the wind. So what you want to do is you just want to stay even because you're probably not going to move. That was only an 18-yard punt. And, you know, I say only, but it's very difficult under these conditions. But now what Post has to do here with only 22 seconds left, they've not that they have to strike early, but they've got to make things happen. Well, they have not been a passing club all year. They would prefer staying on the ground. Mike McDonald in the ball game. He's a single setback. He's a speedster. And he gets the ball. Ripped up again, uh, Pete Mayeski, as we're down now to 14 seconds left in the first quarter. Let's see if they're able to get another playoff. Probably Donald will not. Doesn't look healthy getting up. He appears like he's limping off the field right now. Number 38, Michael McDonald, went down 
It appeared to be he went down rather easily, but maybe he was hurt on the play, and that's why he went down. McDonald uh, hurt his ankle during the preseason and did not play much. Clock shows no time left, although it's not official. The official clock being maintained out on the field. And now the officials have said that's it. So after one, St. John's has the early 7-0 lead. Stay tuned for more on Sports Channel. If it's out there, it's in here. The 9X Yellow Pages. Why would anyone need another? Next Saturday on the Metro College Football Game of the Week, the hard-charging Richard Marines from Kings Point battle to avenge last season's loss to Stony Brook in a hard-hitting grudge match. It's a Liberty Conference matchup next Saturday at 1, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Starting in November on Sports Channel, Chris Morris and the Nets hit the hard court against the NBA's best. Isaiah and the champion Pistons, A. Jordan and the Bulls, Magic's Lakers and more. The action tips off November 3rd when the Nets take on the Heat, live on Sports Channel. Redmond of St. John's, Liberty Conference champions, and their fans enjoying the action here. And you see the standings are right there. St. John's, Kings Point, Iona, Coast, Stony Brook, and Pace bringing up the rear. So we're ready now for a second down play for Post as uh, right now Post is trailing by a score of 7 to nothing. We begin the second quarter with DeLillo going in motion. This is the Arpa getting a block from Richie Cowell going uh, toward the first down marker awfully close and he may have it. That was a good run that time by DiArpa because it appeared he was bottled up back around at 31 and 32, but he just put his head down, kept his feet going. Now they're going to have to measure. But you know, one thing we talked about how the wind will affect this game, it shouldn't affect Post as much as it affects St. John's because Post is a running team. And officials marking the ball down there. You can see how close it is. They'll bring the chains out in just a moment. You make the call. And as you note there, it is a very short distance for the first down. So it should be a third down play here, and an interesting choice for uh, Tom Marshall on third and short here. Well, I don't think it's much of a, of a, of a big choice. Just give the ball to one of your running backs, uh, probably go behind your right side, blast away, and get the first down. Just keep the ball on the ground, keep it away from St. John's. You know, Post was favored to be the, uh, they were the preseason favorite in this Liberty Conference. Now the two losses were shockers, losing to Kings Point 12-10, and last week Tyona 9-2. Post probably had most of their turnovers from the season in those two games. Now yeah, they'll work out of the power eye backfield. DeLillo behind Curtis's block has the first down as he gets to the 25-yard line. Rob DeLillo's been a bit of a disappointment in a sense. Hasn't played up to the potential. A lot of, a lot of people figured he would be uh, one of the key players on this post team, but last few ball games just hasn't been a dominant player. So the ball now at the 26-yard line. Where it'll be first and 10. <laughs> Post trailing 7-0, 45 seconds gone in the second quarter. The Arpa bouncing off a tackle. Nieves had come up from the secondary and hit him, along with Rich Colangelo. Seems funny not to see Shanahan in there. Well, Shanahan, as we mentioned, had a shoulder problem, did not practice all that much this week. Came into the game, one of the leading rushers in the country with 836 yards. Let's go, Let's keep it on the ground here. The 
Saints up of two on that last play. St. John's with a five-man defensive front. The arc again getting blocking the right side. Has the first down. Still driving inside the 15 and down around the 14-yard line. The player we haven't talked about a lot today is number 89, the tight end Fitzroy Thomas. Did a good job with his block on the outside linebacker. Again, that's the guy who, who sprung Shanahan a lot, and I'm talking about the, the tight end Fitzroy Thomas that time. Nice block. Well, Bobby Carroll, Bobby Smith, and Richie Carroll on that right side of the line are the big heavyweights. 310 for Bobby Smith, Richie Carroll, 275. And there's a big guy, too, the tight end uh, Fitzroy Thomas, who goes in about 230. Your size. <laughs> I lost weight. Movement in the St. John's line. Cobb may have been offside. The opera will take the free play if it is against St. John's. Picks up about four as he gets to around the 11. You know, we've talked about it all year. The nose tackle, number 64, Ken Cobb. He's the guy closest to the ball, and they're going to call us against St. John's that appear to be Cobb. He's the closest to the ball, and they, the, the defensive guys go on the movement of the ball. The offensive guys go on the sound, the sound of the quarterback. However, Cobb, the nose tackle, not only is he closest to the ball, let's... Left sides, defense, still first down. His, his, not only are his eyes closest to the ball, his ears are closest to the quarterback's mouth. And very often, a good quarterback with that voice inflection can, can draw that nose tackle off. Now they'll send a slot to the left side. Pergola, 43. And Schroeder, 82, will line up to the left side. First and five. Top going nose to nose against Hal. That's an interesting matchup. Two excellent football players. Rolling is Doyle. Doyle at the five. Doyle at the two has a first down. Good effort that time by Jeff Doyle. Uh, Steve Nieves brought him down, but it'll be a goal-to-goal -goal situation. You know, that's the second time we've seen him roll out and keep the ball and run. It appears as though he's, he's just saying, I'm going to keep it, roll out, and run all the way because his blocking backs, his some of his receivers, are blocking and not even looking back for the ball, so it appears to be a designated run. Right side of the field now is to the right side. That was the second nine-yard run for Jeff Doyle. He's been their biggest gainer so far. Brett Curtis in the ball game in the power backfield. This is the Arpa diving. Did not get it. Boy, Ken Cobb, the, the nose tackle, got good penetration. And the key on that play is the offensive line wants to get the line of scrimmage so that the running back can dive from just behind the line of scrimmage. If the defense prevents that, then the running back, he just doesn't have room to dive. Or if he jumps up, uh, as you saw that time, Cobb and a couple other red shirts just nailed him before he could even get airborne. So good job by the St. John's defense getting that pressure, winning that battle of the line on that, on that play. 11.45 to go, second quarter. St. John's leading it 7-0 on the Scott Sesney to Dennis McDermott 22-yard touchdown pass. Now, Post will call timeout here as Jeff Doyle will go to the sideline to talk to Coach Tom Marshall. Interesting on this point, you can't see it in this picture, but Doyle goes off to talk to Tom Marshall. The whole defense for St. John's comes over to Coach Bob Ricca uh, to talk to uh, him and Fran McCall, the defensive coordinator. Hey, the whole, see the whole defensive team? They're all coming around. Now, Post goes, let's run a play. You know, we talked about how the, the game clock here on the scoreboard is not official. I talked to a couple of the officials before the game, and uh, Joe Coley, who is the referee, he said that uh, on, on the far side of the field, and that's the post side, as they look at the clock, they can't see it because sometimes a reflection of the sun. So they're keeping the official clock uh, on the field. And I noticed one of the officials, he probably won't like me saying this, but he's working with his, he seemed to have problems working with his uh, with his watch. And I said, now, you sure, you sure you know what you're doing? He said, uh, of course. I know what I'm doing, I think. So, uh, that, that first quarter, remember the first game we did here? It was a, uh, about a 35-point first quarter. Went for an hour and 15 minutes. That first quarter was very fast. Here we go. All right, big play coming up. Second down as they work out of the eye formation. Goal to go. Yarpa, big hole, and he slices in for the touchdown. Boy, that right side opened up a big hole, and that's the key down in the goal line situation. you got to win the battle of the lines. Bobby Smith, Richie Cow, opening up a hole like a truck could have gotten through there. I tell you, Yarpa did not even have to dive. He just basically sliced through nicely. Wayne Liebers will attempt the extra point. He's 11 for 11 in extra points. Took over from Guy Asuri, who started the season as the place kicker. And 
and we have a tie ball game with 11.33 to go in this first half. And right now, Post has to feel very good. It's tied 7-7, but uh, one thing that St. John's has done during the course of this year, gotten off to some big starts. And you get this team, Tom Marshall, he's got to be pleased. He didn't look real happy, but he's got to be pleased right now. A nice drive. One thing I talked about a few minutes ago, the, the Post offense wants to keep their defense off the field. Now, uh, on the right side, that last play, a great job by the right side of the offensive line. From this angle, will be the left side, opening up with, with Carroll and Smith. And you'll see the arbor just, just slices right in. Great hole. Richie Carroll, the captain, who was the guy that had that comment about pancakes and syrup, you may recall. Look at 67 behind that big hole. The ARPA scoring. Of course, Richie had those comments about uh, Hofstra. And of course, they put their money where their mouth was for that game. <laughs> That's right. That was post uh, shining moment this season. The ARPA, 10 carries for 42 yards and one touchdown. Azori will be kicking off. Guy Azori, who played for the Israeli soccer team, fine soccer player for CW Post. And the deep men for St. John's will be Conway and DeSantis back at the 20 yard line. They don't expect not, a very long kick to the win. Men. They're not deep men, they're outside the 20. <laughs> Azori makes a pretty good kick here, but it'll go to the sideline out of bounds and we'll get a flag drop and we'll have another kick. Sure, St. John, or rather, St. John's will take another kick here. Two, you got two penalties, one up on top of the screen, too. It appears the post must have been offside on that. It could be offsetting penalties. But uh, one thing you do as a kicker is uh, when you're kicking into a win, sometimes you try to overcompensate for it by killing the ball. Now, the official's going to show us. Let's turn on the switch. There you go, Joe. Uh, we just received the three kicker flashes. Free kick infraction on the kicking team. Free kick. Well, there's also a flag up on the 34-yard line, and, and he's not the one who's going to call that out of bounds. I mean, but whatever. We're going to kick. <laughs> Maybe the wind blew it out of his pocket. Who knows? At any rate, the ball back at the 30. And Post will be kicking off in this tied ball game. One thing I was saying, sometimes when you kick into the wind, you say, well, I got to kill the ball, I got to kill it. It's like a golfer who comes up with a long drive. And he says, you know, I want to really hit a 300 yards, you swing hard, you get way out of your form, and that's when you have the bad one. So you just got to try and meet the ball well and, uh, and do your job. Conway had a 54-yard kickoff return earlier this year against Iona in the game you saw on Sports Channel. And he's the deep man again with DeSantis standing back at around the 30-yard line. So he gets a pretty good kick here, driving him back to around the 18-yard line where DeSantis across the 30. Big hole, he may go. One man to beat, and he's going to go. 82-yard touchdown for Manny DeSantis. Well, I hope we've got an end zone replay of this because the hole opened up very, almost like that last touchdown run. And that was a DeSantis, I tell you, a nice return, but he's got a lot of guys to thank for that. A big hole opened up around the 35-yard line. He just took it all away. And Tom Marshall, now he doesn't look very happy. Out of the past, special teams have hurt CW Post. And St. John's scoring every way. They can score through the air, and they, they can score on kickoff returns. And that was a good kick by, uh, by Azuri, the kicker that time. Very good height, good distance, but uh, just a couple of nice, a big hole opened up for Tisanis, and he took it down. Explosive Redmond now leading 13-7, 11-19 to go in the second quarter. To carry on to try the extra point, Dan in the holder. And the Redmond now lead by seven. Tom Marshall, after his club, did a very nice uh, effort, good drive, giving up the touch, and there's the man of the hour, 5'9", 190-pound senior. Good touch out of Kirk, he likes that. He does know he's on TV right now, look at him. <laughs> you know, you're going to see a hole open up, the sand's going to come to the outside, and look at this hole right here. He just went for it, and now there's nobody back to help, and he's gone. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, Sori was uh, feebly chasing him. You know he wasn't going to catch him. Don't make fun of the kickers, man. <laughs> Don't make fun of the kickers. <laughs> there is uh, our guy. And, you know, Manny was telling me earlier in the week when I was here at practice that uh, Dennis Blygen has helped him quite a bit, especially uh, with his running. He's exploding into the tackle of more. Obviously, didn't have anybody to tackle him on that play. But having a guy like Dennis Blygen around the teachers is uh, awfully a uh, good help. Hey, Dennis Blygen had a great career here at St. John's. Went on to have a career in the National Football League. There's Dennis Blygen right there with, uh, with the Jets, and I talked to him before the game, Coach Brighton said he, uh, he might even give it another shot in the NFL, so, uh, but uh, it's, it's, to have a guy with that type of experience around does help. Dwight and Curtis are deep for the Tricario kick, and this is Curtis uh, at the three-yard line. And a Baylor player bounces off the tackle, will cross the 25, still on his feet trying to get to the 30 and shoved down by the Redmond. And Post will put it in play. First and 10, trailing 14-7 with 11.09 to go here in the second quarter. One thing posted down the kickoff team uh, was they kept the St. John's offense off the field. But uh, they didn't keep them off the field the way they wanted to. You don't have to bring your offense on the field when you return the ball 82 yards for a touchdown. So Post now trying to tie up the ball game as they send Anthony Pergola out as a flanker to the left. Jeff Doyle calling the signals. <laughs> He up in the backfield, along with uh, Delillo. So uh, getting the call is Delillo, and he makes a nice game for about seven or eight, spinning his way across the 35 to around the 37-yard line. You know, you talk about how the momentum can change in a game, and Post got the momentum back with a nice drive for the touchdown. Coach Marshall, there's Coach Ricker from St. John's. Coach Marshall had to feel good, then the kickoff, boom. Momentum comes back to St. John's. Now what uh, Coach Marshall right there like? You get another nice drive going. That's Ratcliffe has checked into the game. There yeah, you see him, number 81. <laughs> He's, He's a speedster. <laughs> see him listening, trying to get to it. Piapa flipping a tackle. Gets across the 40 to around the 43-yard line. it will set up a first down play. Coming up with a stop, Mike Cunningham. And Rich Colangelo also combining on the hit. Normally your guards are the ones that pull, but number 53 right there you can see him to the left of your screen he's the left tackle Glenn Crowley he pulled from his tackle position and kicked out the linebacker opened up the hole they're going with a couple of sophomores on that side John Calabria and Glenn Crowley Calabria 68 Crowley 53 with the injuries they've had to Adam Weinstein and Chris Cameron Diarpa gets by one man still fighting for extra yards picks up about five before Vince O'Grady finally got him near midfield you know, something I mentioned before, don't know if I finished it off, but you're looking at number 23, Steve DiArpa. I've talked about how some players like to play against certain teams. I know when the Jets play the Miami Dolphins, Kenny O'Brien likes that. They light up the scoreboard. I love to punt down in Dallas because it was so warm, but it was calm. Well, it appears that Steve DiArpa, he kind of likes to play against St. John's. He's carried the ball 12 times today for 53 yards. Had the big game last year, about 185 yards. Second, and let's call it about four. Delillo slicing for the first down at around the 45-yard line. Again, Vince O'Grady on the tackle. What Tom Marshall has to like about the last two drives is they haven't been hit with penalties, something which has really stymied their offense. Haven't turned the ball over, no penalties. Now there's your big nose tackle. <laughs> look, look at that matchup right there. Number 60 is Pete Porcelli, the center. Taking out Ken Cobb, that's always a great matchup to look at, but you, you normally don't see it because it's buried within the middle of the offensive line, defense line. Good job by our camera crew. Post at the 46-yard line, first and 10 as they keep it on the ground. DeLillo trying to fall forward. Kenny Cobb got a piece of him early along with Rich Colangelo. And he picks up a round two, so the linebackers making a lot of stack uh, tackles here. St. John's goes with a, an odd man front. Also, they have a... There's Dave Shanahan. Well, let's go down to the field for an update. Here is Matt Lockwood. Thanks, Barry. You can see Dave Shanahan on the sideline. Normally, he's the workhorse of this offense, but last week he injured his left shoulder. It doesn't bother him when he gets hit, but rather when he hits the ground. So the coaching staff, not wanting to injure him further, has him out of there. And DeArpa, who has the ball now, has been the star. They're not going to catch him. 
43 yards for Steve Diarpa. And right now on the 39-yard line, Rob DeLillo, who is the fullback, was holding up his arms. He had a crucial block, a key block to open up the hole for Diarpa that time. What a nice block by the fullback, and that's the guy who I'm sure that Diarpa will go over and just clang on the head when he gets an opportunity. Right there, you saw him go over and just give him a slap with his hand. That was a great block by the fullback. So the game opening up right now, as Lieberts will attempt to try to tie it up here. McEntee is the holder. 8.16 to go here in the first half. It's up, and it is good. And we have a tie ball game. So Post showing that they can run the football effectively. They answer that 82-yard kickoff return with a big touchdown drive. Except for the one special team play and the one pass to McDermott, I think Post has to feel very good about where they are right now. Uh, on the other hand, Bob Brickle wants to get his offense back on the field. One thing you don't like as a coach, now watch number 32, the fullback. Watch this kickout block. He's going to cut him right. All right, you can see him on the ground. And there goes Diarpa outside. Another nice block by the wide receiver coming in. He's gone. There's nobody out there. See, one thing that a running team does is it gets the defense up closer to the line of scrimmage. If you can break it outside, you should be gone. Travis Oselmo, number 20, was chasing but didn't have the angle to come up with Wait the a second, wait a second. Last time a, a kicker was chasing, you said feebly chasing. Now you got Travis Oselmo, <laughs> who's a defensive back. He said he was, did you say gallantly? Hey, how many tackles did you make? Oh, I made NFL? a bunch. Oh, in the <laughs> NFL or? Oh, well, yeah. in college, I know you did more. Well, I thought you meant off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the action. Lieberts taking it downfield to Santis. We'll watch it roll and pick it up finally at the 26-yard line and snowed under and driven down. So Post with a big hit there. Number 95, John Chernetsky, the linebacker, one of the men in on the tackle. And that's a fine kick right there because if you can watch the Santis coming up, you're saying maybe it's going to roll out of bounds, but he had to take it because it appears it wouldn't, so now the, uh, the Post is in decent field position defensively. The Arpa capping off the six-play, 70-yard drive with a 43-yard run. Took less than three minutes. And the big play there. St. John's has given up a lot of uh, big plays, a lot of points this year, so they have just outscored their opponents. Right now, McDermott's single covered. They're coming on a blitz. Mimnow is coming, and he wisely screens it out to Danny Tosanis. Down the sideline, stepped out of bounds at around the 40-yard line. It'll be close to the first down, but a good headsy play by Scott Sesney as Mimnow, they were coming on the blitz from the linebackers. Well, one thing we've talked about, Scott McDermott, the, uh, the other guy we talk about, Manny Tosanis, he's the third leading receiver out of the backfield for St. John's in that time. when If you know that going, you, you're going to see a blitz on first down, let him come in, just dump it over the top. DeSantis was there, and now it's second and short. And this is what I call a free play for the offense. DeSantis has the first down and more. Breaks the tackle. Still on his feet and will go. Engelhardt missed the tackle and Manny Tassantis is going to be called for a taunting penalty perhaps. Absolutely. 56-yard run and the big plays continue. Absolutely and something we saw in the first game with respect to that penalty. They, remember that first game they were talking about a lot of uh, the taunting. We saw a lot of penalties on the extra points. The last time you saw DeSantis, you pointed out perfectly, uh, was pointing back at number 78, Steve Smallich, who was in on the play. And now look, look at Tom Marshall. He's on the field. He wants to know what's going on. Now, I don't know the rule here. Do they nullify the penalty? You mean the score? Uh, do they nullify the score and bring it back 15 yards from where the penalty was thrown? That may happen. That appears to be this call, and Manny Tassantis is going to be spoken to, I'm sure, on the sideline. Now they're coming to the sideline. Let's see if we can pick up the officials as they confer here. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Okay, 
what he's saying is the touchdown counts. And if the 15 yard penalty goes on the end of the run, which was a touchdown, so it can either be on the extra point or on the kickoff. Conduct on the offense. The touchdown counts. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Okay, he had a choice that you should have been able to hear. It's kind of quiet, but you should have been able to hear. There are two choices: throw it on the end of the on the kickoff or on the extra point. Also, put it on the kickoff. I know, man. I know you know. I know you like to do it. Not a saying, saying, hey, I had the touchdown, I was just pointing back, that's no big play, but you'll see it. And this is something the, N the NCA is trying to crack down on this year, is that taunting rule, pointing, any kind of language between players, and to keep a look at uh, DeSantis at the end of the play, and watch how he breaks the tackle here. Is this bad tackling or just great second effort? Couple of tackles. Good job there. Now watch Engelhart. Trying to get him, but a good forearm by DeSantis. Now, here's where the penalty is. See him pointing, see him pointing, and the flag went up right away. There was no question about it. Chuck Carrier to try the extra point. And the Redmen have regained the lead right here, 21 14. Well, we talked about Dennis McDermott, but it's been the Manny Tassana show here in the last couple of possessions. Well, he's the other guy, too. Second, he's leading a rusher for St. John's. Third leading receiver. And now watch. Don't point. Don't point. Don't point. Now, there he is. Now, see, see the flag right there. Official right on top of the play. Great call. Now, you... 13 touchdowns for Tassanis, including that one. Two plays, 70 yards, 56-yard run. Took only 23 seconds. We've talked about how explosive this St. John's team is. Well, that's right. And one thing that uh, the fans at home might say, why is that a penalty? What, all he did was point. What happens is things build because of that. Now the other player might, might get upset, come over and take a late hit, might cause a fight. And this is what's happened uh, uh, the last couple of years in college football with all the taunting. St. John's averages 43 points a game. So they're about halfway there. And of course, Post gives up only about 10 points a game. They've yielded twice that many already. So now kicking back at the 20-yard line will be Anthony Tricario. Post should uh, come out of this with a real good field position. Stanley Dwight, speedster, number 40, is back at the 20-yard line. As you see the deep men, Dwight, Dwight is closest to us. And Brett Curtis on, on the far side. Curtis will take it at the 25, 35, 40. Midfield, and the Pioneers are in good shape here. And see what that penalty does. St. John's kicking with the wind. Should be able to put the ball back inside the 20, but as a result, look where Post has the football. Post is in great shape right now. They trail 21-14. They've moved the ball the last two times for touchdowns that they've had it. Getting that vaunted rushing game going. That big offensive line opening up some huge holes. The Arthur and Delillo are the running backs in the pro set. As Jeff Dahl from the 49-yard line puts it in play. This is the Arpa. Picks up about five or six. And they're really pushing out the middle of the line. Keep Porcelli and the guards, Richie Cal and John Calabria on that play. And one thing Post does have an advantage in this game is in that offensive line versus defensive line. The size is, is, is quite a difference. And right now we've got a player down on the field. Is that Kenny Cobb? Oh, they can ill afford to lose Cobb. Looks like he's looking at that left ankle, and that's uh, that's something you hate to see. It could be the knee, and he's you just hate to see this. We don't want to speculate as to the extent of it, but it doesn't appear to be cramps. One of the reasons St. John's has played so well this year, they've been free of injuries. The only guy that was hurt is uh, Picchetti, the linebacker. Other than that, they've been healthy. No stack. Number six it kind of reminds me of Jim Burt a little bit, except with Burt, you could never see the number. <laughs> Here you can see Kenny Cobb's number. And take a look at Cobb's right knee. He gets stood up, and now is there a hyperextension here? Tough to see. Pete Porcelli, number 60, was going head-to-head -head with him, and he'll come to the sideline. Let's see if we can pick up the substitution for you in a moment. Nose tackle's a tough boy. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the action here, second down, and about five from the 44-yard line. Both trailing by seven, the Arpa. Shy of the first down, gang tackle as he got around the 40-yard line. By the way, Steve DiArpa with his rushing has gone over the 100-yard mark today. He's carried the ball uh, some 14 times for 105 yards. Mike Verzello is now in a nose tackle number 53 for the, for the Redmen, and that time uh, Porcelli just moved him right out. 
Porcello, Porcello rather, is only 205 pounds going up against Porcelli 265 day, like you and me. <laughs> Keep it solving me. I don't know why. Back to the action. Oh, the strike buff. You're much stronger than I. Oh, that's true. The Arpa leaps over one man and has the first down inside the 40. The post continue to grind it out. With 6.25 to go, they pick up another first down. Pete Mayeski on the tackle. You know, this game is developing into a type of game that, uh, as you look at top down on the back, you're looking at his left knee right now. It's developing exactly like we said. St. John's big play team. They had big plays, a return, a long run, and a pass. What's uh, Post? They grind it out, run it out. Look at Post. has nine first downs. St. John's only three, but who's ahead? 6.09 to go. First half, Post trailing 21-14, but moving the ball effectively in their last three possessions. This is the Arpa. Look at a fight for the extra yard. He had been shoved back up to the 35-yard line before he was brought down. The Arpa transfer from the University of Maine, played at Nassau Community College for a while, out of Oyster Bay High School on Long Island. Hobbling back on the field is number 64, Ken Cobb. I tell you, those nose tackles are a different breed. Uh, it's very tough to get them out of the game. They played probably the most... Uh, the least happy position to play on that team is your, is your nose tackle, because very in, a, in an odd man front, you get beat on all the time. Now Cobb's move over to the right side. You can just see him bending down the right side of the center. You notice how St. John's isn't manning it up yep. with the offensive line. They're going in the gaps. Good camera work. Here's uh, DeLillo getting a block from the Arpa this time. Runs out of bounds but around the 29-yard line. Just to get back to that point on St. John's, they're not lining up head up with the offensive linemen because they can't win those one-on-one -on -one battles. So they go in the gaps and, and force Post to, to go a little bit away from their strength and have to use their their speed. And, and, and that can help a team that's lighter if they can get the, the, the power team to have to move. But right now, Post doing a good job moving the ball. I think that's what Kings Point did effectively against Post earlier this year when they pulled off the upset. Third and one, they go to the power back there with Brett Curtis coming in. All right, backfield. Curtis, the extra running back. And the Arpa, oh, showed up and slammed down at the 30-yard line. Big defensive play by Kenny Cobb and also Nieves coming up from the secondary, number 31. Now, one thing to point out, it's a great defensive play that sets up a fourth down. Now, will Post go for it? But one thing it sets up, and it appears the Post is, with, with uh, Post being the running team, those, those power formations bringing everybody from St. John's up later in the game, that does open up some type of pass outside. Fourth and two, Schroeder will come out as a flanker. It's a big play right here for Post. Everybody else in touch. The Arpa trying to get the first down, will not. Travis Oselmo, number 20, came up, made the hit, strung him out a little bit, and then he was finished off by John Krug, number 17. I tell you, Oselmo made the play, did not wrap him up, but stopped him and was able to get help. So we've got time out of the field. The Redmond come up with a big defensive play. Exciting college football you're watching on Sports Channel. Did you know that besides all the banking services you'll ever need, Apple Bank also offers low-cost savings bank life insurance? For example, if you're an Apple Bank customer who is a male, age 25, and a non-smoker, you will pay as little as $85 for the first year and receive $100,000 of yearly renewable term life insurance. Apple Savings Bank Life Insurance are smart buy and a small price to pay to protect your family's future. Apple Bank for savings, we're good for you. Well, each week during our game, Sports Channel pauses to flash back into local college football history. Today, we look at the emergence of St. John's star quarterback, Scott Seston. On October 25, 1986, St. John's was beaten by CW Post 59 to 28. But there was a silver lining to that crowded afternoon. Following an injury to starting quarterback Paul Coster, Coach Bob Ricca of St. John's inserted a freshman. Looking to throw for the touchdown to Weisenberger. He's got it for six. As he beat the Scott Sesney threw three touchdowns in that game and has continued his prowess right through this, his senior year, becoming the most prolific passer in St. John's football history.
And he's added to those numbers, only throwing four times today. He's two for four, only 31 yards, but the big one, a touchdown pass to Scott, to uh, Dennis McDermott. So right now, Cessny with the Redmond after the big defensive play. First and 10, 4.26 to go here in the first half. Working out of the eye formation. DeSantis behind Kantrowitz, gets a good block, turns the corner. And out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, Kankowitz came up and met Scott Mankin and just went helmet to helmet. And that's, you know, that's what winning running games are all about, just getting the blocks. And that time, Kankowitz, what a block. Well, he's taken over as the starting fullback, this young freshman from Yonkers, getting better every game, became a starter three games ago. Doesn't get a whole lot of recognition with all the stars they get, but the players recognize that. How about the Santas today? Eight for 84 yards on the ground. And, of course, not only scored a touchdown on a run, but he scored one on an 82-yard kickoff return. Justin to throw. Has time. Looking deep for the sideline for McDermott. He's out there. Double covered. And it goes incomplete. Well, I'll tell you, that time he had late help. Uh, Engelhart did from McEntee, but uh, initially uh, Engelhart was single covering him. You, Dennis McDermott that time, you really see him just single cover, but Engelhart does a good job staying with him, has help to the inside. There's McEntee, and he stays with him to the outside, which he didn't do on that touchdown pass. McDermott needs only eight catches to set the all-time school record for most receptions. He's broken every other record as a receiver here. Most yardage, most touchdown passes, anything you can name. Lines up wide to the top of the pick. Only single coverage this time. Cessney looking that way now will screen it out. It's to Santis at the 45. To midfield and out of bounds. Shy of the first down. Driven out by Scott Mankin, the outside linebacker, number 35. Clock stops with 4.06 remaining. Tell you, DeSantis is such a versatile and valuable ball player to this ball club. We've talked about not only his running, but his receiving. And one pattern which we haven't seen today, which I think St. John's would like to use, is put him on the same side with McDermott, number 26, have McDermott clear it out, and isolate number 33, DeSantis, on a back row over on that side. This time, they're not on the same side. DeSantis had three touchdowns last week in that 65-45 win. Time to screen it out, complete to DeSantis, but good coverage. Roy Schaefer was over there, number 10, and also helping out of the play was James Mimna, number 63. You know, I'll tell you something. When, when McDermott is single covered as he was that time by Engelhart, they give him a lot of room. Earlier in the season I said that maybe they ought to come up and hammer uh, McDermott, but I've talked to some of the coaches and McDermott is very, they say it's very difficult to get a hand on to jam him at the line. Not a big guy, 6 foot 185 pounds on fourth down. St. John's will punt here with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Tricario standing back at the 38 yard line. Fourth punt for Tricario, and it'll be punting with the wind. No back at around the 15 as you watch from our end zone. Post yeah. likes the block kicks. They're coming here. That was Hogan who nearly got to it. And no back will watch it bounce over his head into the end zone. 47-yard kick. Minus 20 on the return on the touchback. But did you notice how that snap floated again? He's snapping into the wind. It's very difficult to catch the ball. It comes back like a knuckleball. And Tricario not very happy. He did a good job getting it off because uh, there was some pressure. Post has blocked three punts this year. An extra point and a field goal. And uh, right now, clock shows 3.05. We're here at Redmond Field, Jamaica, Queens, and we're up top, folks. Keep it nice and warm right now. You see our Sports Channel banner. And hope you're enjoying the action. Don't forget, Stony Brook and Kings Point Merch Marine Academy, our next telecast next week. The ARPA. Delillo check it to the 25-yard line. Pickup of around five. Yev is coming in nicely from a safety position along with Mayeski to make the stop. And now, uh, is there enough time left in this quarter, in this half, for Post to go all the way down and score? With their offense, it might be tough with 2.45 left in the unofficially in the first half. Their deep threat, Vance Radcliffe, number 81, has checked into the ball game. He's the speediest wide receiver, little guy at 5'7". And he lines up at the bottom of your picture. Well, throwing into the wind. Five-man front for St. John. Delillo. 
time. Go outside, Redmond getting excellent attacking. Nieves coming up and making the hit. I think Nieves on that play started out inside the two inside backers, Maeski and Biter, I believe. He was up, he looked like a third inside linebacker that time because uh, he knows that Post is probably going to run the ball, but I'm telling you, uh, the more that Post runs, and we're getting down, there's no two-minute warning, getting down to two minutes, uh, St. John's knows the Post is going to run. It's got to, at some point in time, open up that pass. Dillo has run eight times for 30 yards. Now the officials have called time for a moment. The officials look up at the clock. It says two minutes, uh, but this is college football, isn't it, <laughs> Dave? Not pro no football. Two-minute warning. We, we didn't get the signal on who the... the now, in high schools, they give you a four-minute uh, warning, but they don't stop the game. Now, an explanation will be forthcoming. Now, the clock set back in motion. So it'll be a third down play, third and about three. Post three for seven in third down conversions. They've done a good job, over 40% all year in this department. Although you know how I feel about that third down I conversion know. statistic. Most overrated in football. Well, this is a big play. He's one for five, 15 yards through the air. He had his creeping up there inside the inside linebacker, just behind him. Pitch to the Arpa. And St. John will stop him shy of the first down. Tololo was trying to throw a block over there. However, look at Rick on the field calling for a timeout. He is out in the field. There you can see him signaling. <laughs> Call the timeout. A minute 20 left. Uh, you can always tell those offensive guys, can't you, right? Well, you want the ball back or well, that's well, Also, he's got the win. They're going to be kicking into the win. McEntee is not a guy who's been punting all year. This is only a second game. You don't have to block the punt. You don't. You, I would go after it anyway just to really create some problems, uh, put some pressure on him. But uh, if, if St. John's can get down and and get another score, which they can do a lot more quickly than Post can, it would really be a big benefit to them going in at halftime. McAbee has punted three yeah, times. You know, you know what I love is, is when you have these, these meetings on the sideline, it sounds like there are about 15 coaches. Everybody's got something to say. <laughs> when they go out on the field, it's like, I hope they heard us. Right now, back at the static, back at around the 13-yard line. St. John's has one timeout remaining. And they've got uh, Mr. McDermott, who had a nice return earlier, standing back at the 40-yard line. He's the deep man. Let's see if they come. Nine-man front. Back into an inexperienced kicker. Nice snap, but he has time. Not a big kick. Fair catch called for. Conway nearly bumped into McDermott. It's a good thing he was able to hang out of the ball, and St. John's will have it at their own 46. That was, that was a very nice kick. Into the wind, good hang time, 37 yards. That's an excellent punt. 1.13 left. Anthony Mondron, the captain of the special teams, on the tackle for Post. Now let's see what let's see what Post does with McDermott here. St. John's doesn't have a good opportunity to run the ball. They've been doing that a lot here. But now McDermott's going to the left side. Now there's DeSantis also on a wing on that side. Uh, I talked about that before. Maybe they'll flow him in behind McDermott. Okay, McDermott out of the flank to the left side. It's uh, Jesse with time up the middle, wide open. He has a receiver inside the 35-yard line. Fumbling the ball, McDermott. It rolls to the sideline, and St. John's will get it back. Manny DeSantis, who's been all over the field, coming up after for the fumble recovery after it was not handled by Dennis McDermott. Roy Schaefer with the hit. I'll tell you, now, you see, you wonder why McDermott's so wide open. The player's playing him, and Engelhart was 20 yards off him. Now the ball was spotted at the 47-yard line. Well, they picked up about eight on that play. Chesney sideline pass for the first down, and off the tattle, out of bounds. Stopping the clock with a minute, or checked out with only 39 seconds left. And again, keep in mind that the time is being kept on the field. So that's, uh, and that is a first down play, but it does stop the clock. Tricario, we remind you, the field goal kicker has uh, kicked three for five this year, along with 48, school record. And if he's needed, he can kick a long one. Thomas in recovery. Chesney chased by Mimna and Lavellis and brought down by Mimna. 
Clock ticking now. St. John's has one timeout, and I think they're going to call it right now. Uh, that's a great play by Memnock. Great backside pursuit. That, that really that really does some damage to where St. John's is right now, and that's a fine play by Memnock. They had everybody out of the backfield. I heard a backside seam, I heard a hard post, so maybe they're trying to get the Santos in behind McDermott. Uh, they also, what they like to do also is have uh, Amalfitano run a post pattern, they'll bring uh, McDermott across the middle and bring in DeSantis behind behind where McDermott was. So we'll keep an eye on everything. Now they've got three, they've got two a tight end and uh, mouth down on the right side along with DeSantis. Single setback is Kantrowitz. Destiny with time. Going for the sideline. Holland diving at the 35. Incomplete. Clock stops with 21 seconds to go. I haven't really talked about Kevin Holland, but he has been a key factor since uh, rejoining the club. Was not eligible earlier this season and doing a great job at tight end. Well, it's interesting to see a tight end split out like that as a wide receiver. Normally, you think of your tight ends as being the bigger, heavier guys, but when a guy like Holland can split out and be one of your third wideouts, he's very fast. Has uh, four, six, five speed, according to the coaching staff, and uh, he can be a help, but I'll tell you, that play by Minnaw has hurt St. John's right now. 21 seconds to go. Up the middle, and the reception at the 35-yard line, caught by McDermott. 13 seconds. They have to move the chain. That should stop the clock here. Didn't get the first down. They're not going to stop. No, they didn't. They okay. Right. No oh, first down. Goal. Five seconds. Yards. Four. Tricario. Two. One. They may have the official time down. And he'll get the kick off. It's on the way. And it will be way short. And to the right. And it goes back to that play by Mimna. If he doesn't sack the quarterback, that's a much closer field goal attempt or possibly St. John's would have a touchdown. Now the clock on the on the scoreboard is read 0, zero but the but the officials now let's see, I guess they have said the time has expired because they are keeping the official time. By the way, that big sack by Mindo was the 26th turned in by this outstanding post defense. So the Pioneers trailing by a score of 21-14, but playing a pretty good uh, first half of football. A couple of big plays burned them. Something we talked about, the big plays, which is something that St. John's is good at. They have done them well. But one thing about post, they're doing a good job moving the football, haven't hurt themselves today. They've done better offensively than they have in the last couple of weeks. Down on the sideline, here's Matt Lachlan. All right, thank you very much, Barry. Tom Marshall with us. Coach, down by seven at halftime. They've been running the ball, I imagine, more than you expected. They certainly have, and uh, Sanders has had a great day. We thought we were going to have to go after him, and uh, he certainly has proved to us. He's a good running back. Anything in particular that they've been doing on the ground that, that's been giving you trouble, any adjustment you'll make at halftime? I think we're going to come off the corner a little bit more. We're letting him get outside a little bit more than what we thought, and uh, he certainly has hurt us out there in a big play. For your club, I know the coaching staff has always talked about depth at running back. That's come to the fore today. Well, we uh, Steve Diop is a good running back. He was our starter in the beginning of the year. What happened is Shanahan's down with a bad shoulder, so we're going to have to go with Steve, and we'll go with Mike McDonald the rest of the half. Will Shanahan see any action in the second half? I doubt it. His shoulder is injured. All right, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Marshall, his team down by seven at halftime. It's 21-14. He'll be making his adjustments. Bob Richter will be making his adjustments. We'll see what the second half holds for us. Of course, we have our halftime entertainment for you. When we come back to Redmond Field, stay with us. What do you hate about your medical coverage? My HMO has so few doctors to choose from. But with Healthways, you choose from thousands of doctors in private practice. That's why you love Healthways. Medical coverage is close to perfect as you can get. Let me ask you something. When you need help on a job, do you turn to a neighbor you trust or a stranger off the street? Well, Channel Home Centers has been a neighbor for over 80 years. They've always carried the name brands you trust at prices you can count on. Like this Stanley Toilet Tank Repair Kit. It includes a toilet refill 
refill valve, a flapper tank ball and chain, and a flexible refill tube. Right now it's yours free after a $5 manufacturer's rebate when you purchase any toilet seat from Channel. Hey, Channel has been a neighbor for 80 years. Now, why would you want to go talking to strangers? It's an ancient art, practiced today much as it was long ago. Nature's grains, pure water, a small, flavorful flower, artfully blended to create one simple, special product. It's older than the... week on our college football telecast we get to meet the referees as they make the calls uh, and let us know what the penalty is and what the mark off is but we don't really get to know what the referee is all about what his job is all about a good referee not only has command of the rules but he also controls the game right now let's spend a day in the life of a referee in this case al del vento <laughs> I don't know if it's 25 seconds like that. No, if they don't have one, then I do it. This is the list. Go through that and I'll go through it again. Okay. It explains everything that you have to do with the clock as far as 25 second clock goes. I know Joe was over. Oh, great. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now 20 minutes required to give up. Gary and myself are going to leave and get the information from the clock. It's a confidential conversation we're going to have with them. And at that time, we're going to get the captains. And you get to uh, confirm the time of the day. But what's new to the line? Those are the also around the pickets. I'll be responsible for the, the quarterback most of the time and watching the snap, so there's no snap infractions. Okay. I suffer well with three diagonally across from one another, and both of us will have a, a good look on that ball before the snap. Sometimes I move around slightly, but before and once they make the final adjustment and the final shift, I make sure I have a full look on that board so that they, they don't catch any snap infractions. I'll be responsible for the third card that's behind the line, but I look for both the wings and not on anything like that because they get stuck up or anything like that. I think the right off my son's the statement of right off my son's statement is on him. It's not unbelievable. If we have a fumble, we'll go through the fumble situation, then Gary and I will leave and we'll go to the coaches. The only type of movement that we're going to make and we're going to make is a job and we're going to walk in the middle. We're going to have a son. That's all I have. Looks good. Looks real good. Good day for football. The players are having a ball, let's be sure. I'm going to move to the middle, okay? Let me introduce the umpire, Mr. Gary Hayes. I'm the referee, Mr. Al Belvento. I have the right hat on. If there's any violation, I'm going to call for the captains. I want you to come over and I'll explain the situation to you. If you don't understand the situation, ask me to repeat it. Once you make a decision, the decision is final. You guys are the visitors, okay? I expect you men to be the diplomats of your team. It's a game of football. It's a hard contact game. You have to protect yourself at all times. Okay, I will leave you with a lot of the cheap stuff. Okay, here's the heads. It's a silver dollar. There's the eagle. That's the tails. Here's the head. That's the tails. Who's going to be the spokesperson on your side? Call it in the air. If I drop it, we'll do it over, okay? Hey, heads, of course. Tails it is, you have one to toss. Let's put our hands in. Let's have a good game, okay? Let's go right on him. Let's go. Good football here. All right, easy up, man. Easy up, easy up. White bear, white bear, white, white. Easy up, man. Okay, Blue, get in your huddle. We have white bear. We have an injured official. Hold ball, Gary. All right, Bobby. Relax, Bob. Yeah, thank you. Sit down a little bit. Sure. Wait, hold it up in there. 
Wait, hold it up. It's my time. It's my time. Okay, stay in the huddle. Okay, Bobby? You sure? Bobby, you want to sit down a little bit? You sure? Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. He's okay. Here we go. It's away, it's away, it's away! Get out of there! Get out of there! Hey! Hey, get out of there! Come on, walk away! Walk away! Come on! You're beating him up all day! Nice play, 7-2! Nice play! I got ball, Bobby! I got ball! There's a lot going on in that group. Oh, boy, there's a lot going on in that group. Can I do group? Yes, let's go. 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 Let's we have to change your possession. You can see that holding penalty. That's why I said, well, we're asking. We've got to stop this. Right. Let's talk about this as soon as it's out of the line. Because they got the ball with clean hands, and then they held, or they got the ball with dirty hands. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 right, let's have another good half. Let's stay right on there, okay? Let's go. Okay. okay. It's away, it's away, it's away, it's away. Get out of here, 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, it's going to be 15 yards, automatic first down. You got that. Absolutely. Okay. You guys are having a good game. Don't ruin it with your mouth. Don't ruin it with your mouth. I should have had a delay of game when he threw that ball. Because I had him down on that Aaron snap from center on the front no, no, situation. Okay. It's okay? All right. Oh, we have first down. We have first down. We have first down. Put it down. Good hitting in there. Deep runs. Good running. We got a boring burner here, Neil. Good football. Good football. Good football. Let's go. I can hear him with a, I can hear him with a person that's down. Just going to first down here. That's it, son. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Blue captain. We have every good motion. We got to get behind if the game is over. Okay. Okay. The man that we followed around that afternoon has joined us at halftime, Al Del Vento. And Al, what is the most important criteria a referee has to control? Well, the most important uh, the most important thing is to get the situation right. No matter how convoluted or confusing it may look like on the field, the referee's main concern is keeping control of the game and getting the situation right. At this level, do you find that the players, because they're at a higher level than high school, uh, they somewhat can control themselves a little bit better? Yes, uh, depending on the how vol vol excuse me, how volatile the game is. Uh, if it's a very hard-fought game, the players are on edge just like it is in the lower levels. But you're dealing with a much stronger athlete, a much quicker athlete, and the, and uh, the motions run a little bit stronger than the lower the lower levels. It was quite obvious through the story and as we followed you around that you love the sport. What in particular, though, do you enjoy about it? Uh, just the ability to get out there and be a part of the game again, know that, that I'm no longer ab able to play the game, just to become a part and be out there and join the game. You are a state trooper in the state of New Jersey. Do you find that your officiating duties help you in that job, and in fact your duties as a, a state trooper help you on the field? Uh, I think maybe my duties and my training as a state trooper carry on to the field a bit. How so? Uh, just uh, to take charge of type of attitude and try to take charge of the field and uh, present a nice image and... Uh, that's, I think that's about it. Now, today you're working as the clock operator. It's an opportunity where you're not on the field, but you, of course, have a very important function. Uh, do you just enjoy being a part of the officiating crew, or is referee where it's at? I'd much rather be the referee, but we receive assignments from our office, and today I've, uh, I have the assignment of being a clock operator, so I enjoy that position also. Do you watch other officials while you're working? I mostly watch the officials and a little bit more. Not as much as I watch the game, I miss the officials. <laughs> Do officials critique themselves afterwards where you get together and say, hey, this is where you should have been, this is a call that maybe uh, we should have thought twice about, or is there an overseer in the ECAC who will come back and give you a report? Not only do the officials critique themselves, they're critiqued by the coaches, and they, if a televised game like this one today, it's going to be critiqued by uh, our ECAC office. All right, Al, thank you very much for joining us. We'll let you enjoy the rest of halftime and get back to your job as clock operator. We're going to take a short break here. 21-14 to score St. John's on. On top, when we come back, Dave Jennings and I will take a look at first half highlights and statistics. Hi.
14 to score St. John's on top. And for St. John's, it's been a matter of executing the big play, Dave. Well, something we talked about early in the game is the fact that St. John's this year has lived by the big play, and they've gotten some big ones. And really, the big difference in this game is that punt return by, uh, for, you know, for the touchdown. Uh, Manny, De uh, Manny DeSantis with the kickoff return for the touchdown. He also had the big run for the touchdown. That's been a bit of a surprise. We expected more of an aerial attack from the Redmen. Well, again, it's a little bit of a tough day to throw the ball. We've seen a little bit change in the in the game plan by the Redmen, uh, more running the football and more of the shorter passes because it's difficult. It appears like it's gotten windier here to start the second half, but the game is, is as we called it, Post is running the ball well. They've got over 160 yards uh, rushing the football, so that's something that uh, uh, we, we weren't surprised at. The numbers, as you can see, favor CW Post rushing-wise big time, actually, and it's a very tight game in total yardage with Post with the one-yard advantage. One yard, but the difference, seven, seven points difference on the scoreboard, and that's the return for the touchdown and the kickoff. Anything that you see that has to be done by either club? Just keep doing the same things, and uh, this game will, could go right down to the wire. I think both teams have to be, uh, they're probably in their locker rooms right now saying, look, we're doing the job we want to do, we're running the ball well, post is. Uh, the, the passing game hasn't been so big for St. John's, only because of the win. Uh, St. John's has been, they found McDermott double teamed. Does St. John's in the, in the locker room say to themselves, well, we've come this far with the pass, but the run and the big play has been doing it in this game. Are they a little uncomfortable after the first half, though they are leading? Well, I don't. when you're leading, I don't think you're ever uncomfortable. And they're up by seven points right now, so uh, I think they're just going to, both teams are going to stick with what they're doing, and uh, I think it was a little bit of a surprise to post when St. John's came out and ran the ball like they did. Let's take a look at some highlights from the first half, and we've talked about the depth of the CW Post backfield, and Steve DiArpa has scored look, two touchdowns. Look, look at that hole. You and I could waltz through that hole and that's what offensive line blocking down the goal line is all about and we talked about the superior size four post and that's what happened there. St. John's we've talked about passing game all day long but many many DeSantis with all the publicity the passing game has gotten has said hey I'm not too bad myself. Well, he's a tough runner he keeps his legs going breaks one tackle here and then the other tackle he breaks down here look at this using that left arm to, to push off the, uh, the linebacker and running down the field now here's where the penalty occurs with a taunting and and then when that flag was thrown, uh, his coaches did bring him over and say, look what you've done. Great run, Manny, but you've got to maintain your cool out there. Big time runners. That's what Dennis Blygen said. Big time runners don't do that. Well, that's right. And after that play, you saw the kickoff came from back and instead of on the 35, it started on the 20 and Post got the ball at midfield. So that could have been a big play. All right. As Dave mentioned, the wind has kicked up. Uh, a cloud cover has blown in. I don't know if we're going to see the sun the rest of the afternoon. That may be a factor because St. John's may not be able to pass much at all. They haven't done it much in the first half, but the second half, maybe not at all. It cuts down their longer game. Uh, they'll, uh, one, one adjustment I think you'll see Post make is they'll probably put a little, little more pressure on DeSantis because he's a good receiver coming out of the backfield. All right, so that's a look at statistics and halftime highlights. 21-14 to score. St. John's on top of CW Post. We'll take a short break here. We'll come back with second half action right after this. I'm 2114. I'm Barry Landers along with Dave Jennings and Matt Lachlan. Well, next Saturday, Sports Channel continues its exclusive coverage of local college football when top 10 ranked Kings Point takes on the Stony Brook Patriots. It's the Metro College Football Game of the Week, Kings Point versus Stony Brook. Next Saturday afternoon at 1, live and exclusive right here on Sports Channel. Well, speaking of the top 10, Sports Channel's Apple Bank small college football poll this week has Cortland on top, and they're playing Division II Springfield today. Union undefeated, uh, taking on Coast Guard. You're watching St. John's. Trenton State, uh, one of the best local teams in the area in the Metropolitan, uh, off to a great start. Wagner is off today. They'll play CW Post next week. And Kings Point is playing number 10 Hofstra, and uh, trailing Hofstra 6-0 in a surprisingly low-scoring ball game late in the first half over at Hofstra. Ithaca, Iona, Montclair State, and Hofstra, of course, round out the top ten. And Ithaca, by the way, leading pace 14-0 in the second uh, quarter as they dedicate Mazella Field today. Lovely young lady right there. 
and Sports Channel's Apple Bank Small College Co-Players of the Week. <laughs> and a great combination. There's a great combination right there. <laughs> they are the great quarterback-receiver tandem from St. John's University, Scott Sesney and Dennis McDermott. And of course, last week against Kings Point, Sesney completed 16 of 32 for 378 yards and six touchdowns. McDermott had five receptions for 164 yards and four scores as the Redmen beat the Mariners 65 to 45. Congratulations to Scott Sesney and Dennis McDermott. They're getting a lot of play in Newsday, the local paper here in uh, Long Island. Big story on them talking about how they worked over the summer and worked very hard three, four nights a week. Well, all successful passing teams have a combination uh, where, whether it was Namath to Don Maynard or you talk about here with St. John. The, the, the amazing thing about Scott Sesney and, and really Dennis McDermott, he coming into this game at 28 receptions, 14 for touchdowns. Every other reception was a touchdown, which is amazing. And he's had uh, three receptions today for 59 yards and, of course, one touchdown. Amazing career. Two young men uh, who have worked very hard. And quoting uh, McDermott, he says, he makes me look fantastic. When he comes back to the huddle, I'm still shaking my head. Put it in my zip code, Scotty, he says, and I'll catch it. <laughs> and he has done the job throughout the year. We will have St. John's, by the way, on a couple of times. You'll see him uh, finishing up the season against Hofstra. And that should be quite a game, our final game of the season. Look forward to that. I, uh, I enjoy talking to the coaches in this Liberty Conference. They're very good guys. They're, they're fun to talk with. And Mickey Hukowski and Bob Rickle, I'm sure they'll be up for that game. Well, there have been Liberty Conference champions throughout the years, and you can see Kings Point was dominating the conference early, and Fordham took over last year. Now we have a new champion, St. John's Redmond. But St. John's goal is more than just the Liberty Conference championship. They would like to go to the NCAA playoffs for the first time ever. Well, that'd be great. You know, whenever you think of St. John's, you think of what? Their basketball program. But now that Bob Rick has, has done a great job here with their program. He's been here with 12th year. Uh, there's Tom Marshall, of course, coming across. He's thinking about those big plays that Coach Rick likes to uh, uh, generate for the St. John's offense and how to stop them. Uh, you know, McDermott hasn't been a big weapon there in that first half, so, uh, uh, but, but Tom Marshall knows that those big plays are, are a big part of that offense. Well, that one big run really hurt them uh, to stand us a 56-yard run. This is a club that has given up uh, less than 100 yards on the ground to opponents, and they've already given up about 98 yards in the first half. Well, this is, uh, again, one thing I think we're seeing a little bit different game plan by St. John's, only because of the weather. Makes it difficult to throw the ball, and, of course, we've seen most of the time the post defense has been double-teaming McDermott. So it should be an interesting second half, and we hope that you will stay tuned on our Sports Channel College Football Game of the Week. As we mentioned, next week it'll be Kings Point Merchant Marine Academy. We'll get a look at their run-and-shoot offense, and they had some run-and-shoot game with these guys last week, 65-45. I was down in New Orleans last Sunday, picked up the paper, and I was checking out all the scores, and I saw that. <laughs> you know, I, I asked Coach Rick during the week, I said, number one, was, it, was it using a shot clock instead of a, 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 a play clock? Uh, gig, you know, it was, it was pretty impressive. What are the local score? By the way, we will have, as we've mentioned, Stony Brook next week, and they are winning today, their second game in a row, leading Stonehill 27-10, late in the second quarter. But they've got their offense going, and an update, Iona, leading pace 14-0. You were up at Iona earlier this week, weren't you? Up at Iona earlier this week, Tuesday night, and they, so I think they're kicking off their new field. Uh, Gazella Field. Yeah, and it looked pretty nice, although when I was up there, it was pouring, but uh, I think that uh, Harold Park has done a fine job with that program and really got them going. Their only loss came in the opening ball in a disastrous first quarter. You take that first quarter away here against St. John's, they might have been undefeated. They played St. John's awfully tough the rest of the game. Well, Tom Marshall with his club trailing by seven. But he has to be pleased with certain aspects of that first half. They did move the ball effectively on the ground, but defensively, they gave up the big plays. They've run the ball well. They haven't committed the penalties, haven't turned it over. So they're doing what they want to do. They just, as you just said, stay away from the big plays. Now St. John's goes out on the field. And they're going to be kicking off, so it'll be a, a chance for their defense to get on the field early. From the fans here cheering on. Maybe you were just out on the field just moments ago, of course, with Matt. How bad are the conditions down there? How cold and how difficult it is for 
for the players. It's cold, it's windy, the field is damp, but it's not real wet. And uh, you know, I talked to both coaches before the game. Of course, when I was when I was punting, uh, look, you can see the tassel on the, one of the uprights. When I was playing, whenever it get windy or cold or rainy, I'd just go right in the locker room during practice. And sometimes the teams would come inside, and here the ball gets blown off the tee. Uh, but all three teams, both teams practice outside. All three practice days this week in the rain and the cold and the wet. Stanley Dwight and Brett Curtis are back to receive the kick. Dwight is averaging about 18 yards, and it'll come to his side. It'll be taken up field at the 25-yard line by another player. And as he spins along the sideline, brought down by Anthony, or check it, the, with the ball was Anthony Mondrone, the captain of the special teams. And he runs it back uh, for a short pickup to the 37-yard line. So they'll have pretty good field position right here to begin the second half. I tell you, see that kick that time by number 14, <coughs> Chicario kicked it very well, but it just held up there. So let's see if there are any changes for the post pioneers. You heard the fact that Dave Shanahan will not see any action here in the second half. That shoulder, which he hurt last week, he fumbled three times in the loss, bothering him. So the offers the tailback had a great first half. And Doyle on the draw plate of the Arpa for five, for ten. And the first down as he picks up about 15 yards before he's brought down. So good opening play. Kevin Conway and Vince O'Grady combining on the tackle. You got to know Post is going to run the football. And something I said early in the game is, uh, or early in the first half, of all the running that Post has been doing, maybe the pass is open. Now what Post does is they come out and they show a pass and then go with a draw and it's wide open. The, the defensive backs for St. John's are, are way back, maybe expecting a pass on first down. The Arp has carried 21 times for 119 yards and two touchdowns. He'll try again. Trying to turn outside. Crumbles the football but falls on top of it as he was hit by Pete Mayeski. So it'll set up a second down and a loss of about two on the play. The ball back at midfield. If your inside linebackers can come up and you're looking at number 34, Pete Mayeski, if your inside linebackers can come up and cut down that outside run, that's a big plus for your defensive team. Mayeski's a little bit banged up. He's not been playing as well as he possibly can, but he is the heart and soul of that defense. Nicola lines up as a flanker. To the left side, Brody to the right side as they work out of the eye on second and 12. Well, one for five in the first half, big straw. Play action up the middle. He's got Pergola open. First down at the 29-yard line. Did he fumble the football? Let's see if they blew it dead first. It'll be a completion. And Post has it inside the 30th. Kevin Conway was in on the hit. So little Anthony Pergola, 5'7", sophomore, comes up with the reception. Okay, now on the first play, we had play action, and it was the draw. This time they set it up, but this time the quarterback keeps it. Wide open, coming across. I mean, not necessarily wide open, but open for the ball to come in. Conway makes the, makes the tackle. The ball pops loose after he hits the ground. So Doyle with his second completion of the ball game. The Arpin Delillo in the backfield. Blackfoot then is a wide receiver. They go to Schroeder on the far side. Conway has got him wrestled, but he can't pull him down up before he picks up about seven or eight yards. And uh, Post moving the ball effectively, going to the air here in the second half with the win. That's right, and that, that's one place where you want to use it if you are going to pass the ball. Use it in this quarter with the win at your backs. And I said, though, with the running game going so well in the first half, you got to believe St. John's will make a couple of changes, and it would allow Post to go with the pass, and both defensive corners are playing pretty far off the wide receivers right now. So I had a good ball game last year against St. John's, and they come from behind 29-21 victory. Second and short, the Arpa behind Delillo, gets the block as he hit Nieves, hops over a tackler and is down at the 15-yard line. First and ten for the Pioneers. Getting up slowly is Bobby Smith, number 66. The big 310-pounder there, you see the big guy there bending over. Not only does Post have the good sized offensive line, they've got a great fullback in Rob DeLillo. He's done a nice job kicking out the linebackers coming up for the safeties to make the block, doing a good job to let the Arca get some room. He's regarded as perhaps the best athlete on the offense. First and ten. Post trying to tap the ball game, draw play the Arpa. Cobb's got him wrapped up. He falls forward after he picks up about two. And set up a second and about seven or eight. 
11.54 to go here in the third quarter is now Mike Cunningham, number 59, will check into the ball game for the Redmen, replacing Adam Gonzalez, number 99. Omar Gonzalez. Now they line up with two receivers to the right side. That's Schroeder 82 for goal of 43. Single coverage on each. On second and eight, St. John's looking like they were going to cover the blitz. Doyle in trouble, gets away from O'Grady. He's at the 10, 5, toward the far side. Did he get in? It's very close. No, he's down at about the one-yard line. It'll be goal to goal. Talk about survival of the fittest. Did you see Doyle step up and get away? A great athletic play by that young man. That was almost about an eight-yard loss. Are you can look at him. He said, "Up, oh, got to pull up short here." Oh, Grady almost made the grab, but now it's just, "Hey, I'm going to run and try and get it close." And he's down to one-yard line, inside the one-yard line. Oh, really stretched that jersey. Conway was holding on for dear life. The opera for the touchdown, and it's 21-20. So Jeff Doyle leading a sharp drive downfield, is passing and running, setting it up for Steve. The Arp third touchdown, and the Redmen lead by one. And once CW Post gets within the five-yard line, it is very difficult because of their size, their size differential for St. John's to stop Post. Post has that bigger size differential. Post has rushed for 12 touchdowns this year. Wayne Liebers to try to tie it. McEntee the holder. Last year, St. John's blocked the kick. McEntee threw a pass for a two-yard conversion. And this one is up, and it is perfect. And we're deadlocked at 21 apiece, and Tom Marshall says, good going, guys. Good drive. Uh, cha changing things up a bit. Tom Marshall going with a lot of play action, a lot of passing looks, and running off of it, doing a nice job changing things up and enabling a nice drive down the field. And one thing now the post has to be concerned with the big play. They don't want to give it up either on the kickoff or any kind of pass play. But inside, they're at half yard line. Very difficult for, for St. John's to stop with the size differential. He De just walks in. DeLillo also with a good block on the left side of the line. And when he's blocking, he is a, a tremendous asset to the to the ball club. I almost gave you a good block here in the You're booth. Very active up here. You must be a fan of John Madden. His arms flying, notes flying. Well, I'm built like John, not quite as heavy. However, I, you know, for anybody who knows Barry Landers, folks, I'll just just drop and let you know on something. He is known for sending soda flying. And so far in the first, how many games we've done together? This, this is, is the fifth. fourth, fourth or fifth game. Haven't spilled the soda. However, this is the first time you, you didn't bring your bottle with a with cap on it. You know, the little kids use because they're always spilling them. But you've got open sodas here. Let's see if any of my kids are out there. Cheering for Barry Landers. Barry Landers <laughs> fan club is here. Brian Hamel will do the kicking off. So Azuri not kicking off here. Hamel, number 39, having trouble with the wind as he tries to tee it up. I notice one thing that Post does is they line up uh, before the kick and everybody stays in close. Now watch Hamel will, will raise his hand getting the signal from the referee that he is ready. Then Post will sprint out and set up. What they're trying to do is sprint out late so the St. John's can't get it, the guy they have to block. St. John's has two excellent return men. We've seen already Tosantis with an 82-yard return. And Tosantis will get another chance here at the five fumbles it. Gonna be in trouble here. In down as he gets to the 18, 19 yard line. And uh, host pioneers have fired up Michael Perino, number 61, one of the first men in on the tackle. What happens when a player muffs the ball is, as DeSantis did that time, his teammates look back, they see him, what they think is catch the ball, they start running ahead for their blocks. Meanwhile, DeSantis is running back trying to get the ball, so oftentimes the players come in and can make the big tackle. The Arpa capping the seventh play, 63 yard drive in under four minutes with a one yard run. Liebert's the point after with tied at 21. And 46 to go here in a very good third quarter. Hope you're enjoying the action. Hantrowitz this time getting the call and the freshman fullback gets maybe a yard to the 20-yard line. Setting up a second down play. John Hogan, the captain and the inside linebacker with the hit. 
Jim Buckner also the outside defensive end making the play and something we've seen by St. John's continues here early in the third quarter. They're still going to run the ball. That time McDermott again double teamed. Now Alpha Tano will line up as a flanker to the right. No back will pick him up at the top of your picture. Engelhardt will play McDermott. And will get help from Roy Schaefer, the linebacker. Chesney under pressure, screening it out, but forcing to throw the ball under the pressure from Chris Russo to a bad pass intended for Manny DeSantis. And again, something we've talked about, if you can get pressure, that time it was number 94, Chris Russo, coming in from his tackle position. If you can force the quarterback to throw it before he wants to, and that time he was forced to throw it and did not throw it well, that's not quite as good as a sack. But hey, you got the incompletion, sets up a third and nine. And, you know, you talk about third down conversions, but first down, second down, efficiency very poor. That sets up a very difficult third down conversion attempt. Hey, John, 0 for 5 and third down. They'll try to draw it out. And DeSantis will be stopped shy of the first down as he got to the 27-yard line. Scott Mankin and James Mimnaw bringing him down. And post defense has held St. John's. Three plays and out. Now we get a late flag thrown on the field. Let's see what that's all about. Remember, DeSantis had the words earlier with one of the post players. Maybe the post player came back and taunted him and said, hey, we stuffed you on that play. Very active today in the booth, Barry. I'm going to have to move down a little bit. Barry's forearm is tough. <laughs> Good ball foul on sportsmanlike conduct on the defense. Automatic first down. Well, just as I predicted, post taking the penalty, and it might have been exactly that. A comment by a post player, maybe right. back to DeSantis, and Tom Marshall talking things over with the umpire. He can't be pleased with the call, nor with the player who caused the call, because that's that's a turnover right there. That penalty is a turnover because it should be post ball right now, but now it goes back over to St. John's. Wagner and Post over the years have been really hurt by penalties. Post has given up 11 penalties per game, about 100 yards. Single setback, Chesney Ford sideline, McDermott's got it. And he avoids the tackle, stays in bounds with a couple of handy moves in his down at the 40-yard line. Well, I'll tell you something. Scott says he in St. John's certainly knows when McDermott single covered because that time single covered was given plenty of cushion, so he runs five down, five yards, eight yards down and out. McDermott, number 26, that's his fourth catch today. This time single covered on the left side, the bottom side of the screen, so he'll run down about four or five yards and just cut it out. There's no one there because the defensive back is playing so far. Now watch a little move here. Point. Another move. Almost got the face mask right. there. Well, he made a couple of moves on Engelhardt, 34, Mankin, 35. Watch the 41 yard line, single setback now. And DeSantis falling forward inside the footy. Not much of a hole as they submarined it. Buckner and Russo were the guys who broke up the play, but falling forward, Manny DeSantis picks up a couple. Clock ticking with 8.54 to go here in the third quarter. St. John's leading at 21. Well, check that the game tied at 21 apiece. I'd like to know what that penalty was against Post. Please send Matt down to find out what exactly what it was. He's over there in the sideline now. Now the top of the to get to the bottom. Testing. Quick drop, looking sideline from Alpha Tunnel, overthrows it. No back in Schaefer were the defenders in the area. Again, pressure that time. That time, number 94, Chris Russo in again. And you put pressure on the quarterback. We talk about it time and time again. Force him to throw fast, and he won't be as efficient. One of the things that St. John's has done so well this year is prevent the sack. They've had only five sacks coming into the game today, and one, of course, today by Nimno, a big one late in the first half. Chesley is 8 for 14 for 97 yards and a touchdown. Third down play coming up here. And that's all about a yeah, single setback. Oh, ready to blitz and making a move across the line with John Lavella's flags go flying everywhere. <laughs> Seeing Russo right now is pointing at the back. Uh, that time, Lavellis ran across, and I don't think Russo saw him on the right side, so when the back stood up to, to you know, to see that, that's when Russo just uh, uh, pulled off and nailed Dunlop. Boy, I, they're going to talk about it now, because when Lave I believe it was Lavellis who jumped across, he didn't hit anybody. And you can jump across as long as you get back before the ball is snapped. Clock stops with 8.27 to go here. Got a 
personal foul. I think that foul could be against Russo for hammering Dunlop. So after avoiding those costly penalties in the first half, they've committed two on this drive. Denver, personal foul on the defense, first down. Now again, you're going to see, I believe, Lavellis, number 99, see him jump. All right, now, he doesn't hit anybody, but the left tackle moves, and that's when Dunlop gets hammered. Now, what the official might be saying, and I can't get into their head, is saying, hey, Russo, you didn't have to hammer him. All you got to do is touch him, and there is no reason for him to hammer him. But again, I'm just guessing because we don't get any numbers. All the Redmond, aided by the two big penalties on the move right here. Tell you something, Russo hit Dunlop about as hard as you've been hitting me up here in the booth today, Barry. Yeah, that great forearm of yours is very strong. You gonna throw a flag on me, bro? <laughs> Greg Skopinski in the ball game at tight end right now. And also in the game, <laughs> Scott Kantrowitz. Larry Roth, our producer director, giving you some uh, hints from the uh, truck there. <laughs> we won't repeat some of those comments. So right now, Redmond with it. At the 24-yard line, first to 10. Most penalized four times for 40 yards. And only two penalties up to this last time. Redmond move. The eye reverse here, Biff. Jason Villar, he could throw the ball. He was a quarterback in high school. He's got five hit hard from behind. Boy, did Lapellis level him. But he picked up close to about eight yards on the play as they did a little razzle-dazzle there. They did that early in the in the, in the the game in the first quarter. But Lapellis getting a good job, doing a good job pursuing. Uh, McEntee also did a nice job stringing this out. Now, Villar's coming down. You're going to see number 22, McEntee, hold him up. And then number 99 come in from behind. There's number 20. There you saw it. It's called a nine-yard pickup for Jason Miller. Second and one. Jackson to go to the air with time. Looking for Amalfa Tano. He's open. Redmond regained the lead 27-21. That close corner pattern is something that has worked for the second time. Art Nelbach was the defensive back on that side. Amalfa Tano had a wide side of the field. Remember, it was on the left hash. Amalfitano ran down, in, that's what Nelbach went for, no help either way, and that's when Amalfitano cut it back to the outside for the nice grab. Third touchdown reception for Amalfitano on the year, and for Scott Sesley, TD pass number 23 in seven games. The carry up, the extra point. It's up. And the Redmen now lead by seven, with seven and a half minutes to go here. So they're on there, Robert, moving to that 43 point ball. They are in a couple of key penalties against St. John's and against Post. Right now, back in the end zone, number 94, Chris Russo was talking to the referee, talking to referee Joe Co uh, Coley. Now watch up at the top of the screen. Here he is, number 83. See him on the post and then go back outside. And that's where he sells it. He sold the post, bought the corner. And there it is, wide open, floated in there. Time out of the field, 7.30 to go in our Liberty Conference Showdown. We'll be right back. I wonder if I can get a car Sixty-seven to seventy-one when it was a club team. So he's got a little bit of him uh, still here at St. John's. And you, Dutch Outerkirk, the offensive coordinator. He's got to be pleased with a couple of nice passes. But you know, as a, as a coach, two key penalties against Post really hurt. Again, that's Dutch Outerkirk. Two key penalties against Post, and there are two feelings on the head coach. He's upset with the officials for calling them, but he also has to be upset with the players because one was a turnover on a punt formation, and the other was that would have. Uh, <coughs> was on the 15-yarder um, down here, so two big penalties. The carrier to kick off into the win, sends a beauty downfield, Dwight and Curtis are there, it's Dwight at around the 8-yard line. Tripped up, big defensive play by the Red, the number 24, Chris Farrell, on the tackle. That was a great kick into the win. And uh, that one, a beautiful drive indeed, as eight plays, 81 yards, four minutes, 16 seconds. And Scott Sesty throwing into the win, completing the touchdown pass to our Anthony Amalfitano. And his improvement has been a factor in St. John's success this year. He was a kid who sat out all of last year, was injured in preseason. Gives him somebody else to worry about as a deep threat. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yarpa with Danilo leading. He cuts back the other way and bounces for about five yards. But look at the gang tackling of St. John's. Don't tell me they're not fired up today. Delilo running out here saying, Where, how come I can't block anybody? But that's because Diarpa turned it up. You know, you talk about Amalfitano. I was at a luncheon in New York about a month ago, and his dad came up and introduced himself to me. said, I'm Anthony's father. Nice, uh, nice gentleman. I said, yeah, he's got some nice things to say about your son. He got some more right there on that nice touchdown reception. No. Dave takes the rounds of uh, a lot of the colleges. We'll get a chance perhaps to talk about that. You're involved in uh, a drunk, uh, against uh, drunk driving. Students against drunk driving, I believe. Vance uh, Radcliffe now positioning the floater. There seems to be touched about the lineup. They line up in the slot race. They go to the right side. The upper across the 30, runs into a couple of guys. Shy, shy of the first down. Around the 31-yard line. And so Brady again on the tackle, along with Scott Ryder. Linebacks have done an excellent job for St. John. They're, they're still talking. The, the CW Post offense is still talking. Uh, Schroeder down here on the corner. He was a little concerned about the lineup and uh, appeared to be that play. Didn't get off that well, although it did gain some yardage. So a key third down play coming up for Post trailing by seven. 6.09 to go. Third and four. <laughs> Let's see if Doyle goes to the air here. He will. Unless he runs. He's going to run. He's got Carroll out there blocking. He has the first down. Down the sideline. Pulled down from behind at the 45-yard line. So Jeff Doyle doing it with his running ability today. That's four big gainers he's picked up running the football. Finally brought down by Omar Gonzalez. And, and we've got a player down on the, on the field for a post. A post. It looks like it's Doyle. And, you know, you talk about his running. Every time he rolls out to the left, he never intends to throw the ball. He's just going to run. 24-yard gain that time for Doyle. Four for 59. And he is down. I don't want to speculate, but again, you watch. He's not going to throw. See, he's got it down. He's going all the way. Number 67, Richie Carroll leading the way. Now you'll see him lose the ball as he hits the ground from behind. Can't see it there. Omar Gonzalez, 99, with the big hit. Now his head hit the turf, and then he got turned over, so you just hate to speculate whenever there's a player down. He had 250-pounder Gonzalez and Richie Carroll, who goes in about 265, landing on him. Not quite as much as me hitting you, but that's a load anyway, Dave. They do have an outstanding backup quarterback, Bobby Truman who, uh, of course, will come into the game if Doyle is seriously injured. Truman is a 6'2", 215-pounder. Well, let's take another look and just see if we can see what happened to Jeff Doyle after he hits. Watch his head bang on the ground right here. Watch his head bang, and then he's going to get turned over. Bang. And then he keeps going and gets landed on by his own teammate. Richie Carroll was the man who landed on him, but again, you had Gonzalez with his weight on him as well. But... I've been speculate as the post trainers are working on him. Evan Mallon's the trainer. Matt Lachlan is right there also. He is he will try and get us, I'm sure, some information as soon as he can. And anytime you see a player head hit like that. Well, next week, Sports Channel brings you six games of the New Jersey Devils and New York Islanders. The Devils battle the Toronto Maple Leafs Monday at 7.30 and the Hartford Willers at 7.45 on Thursday. The Islanders host the Edmonton Oilers Tuesday at 7.30 and Friday and Saturday night at 7.30. The Isles have a home-at-home -home series against the Rangers. The Devils and the Islanders all next week, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Now, don't forget, next week for us, we'll be out at Stony Brook and looking at those improving Stony Brook uh, ball club. The Patriots leading at last to Port Stonehill by four touchdowns today against uh, Kingsport Merchant Marine Academy. They were trailing Hofstra at the half, six to nothing. You know, something you mentioned before that, you know, I do go around a lot of the schools in the area uh, talking to the, to the kids. I was at Iona last Tuesday night, and I was out at Stony Brook on Wednesday. Wednesday evening, and I was at uh, New York Institute of Technology on Thursday, uh, Friday morning. So I do get around, and it's uh, I enjoy it. Enjoy talking to the kids, although they do look a lot younger these days. I, I've only been out of college, what, for 15, 16 years? Kids look... <laughs> They look like babies at times. And they don't look like they did when I was in school. I'll tell you, some of these... Big. Uh, 
I'm not talking about the guys. Oh. Right now, they don't want to move his uh, neck, apparently, and they're waiting perhaps for a physician. You see the St. John's trainers over there also. See, the speculation. one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to, you don't want to move a player. Yeah, he may not be seriously injured right here. Now, the ambulance is going around the track. will join it shortly. They just they want to keep him isolated because one of the worst things you can do is move a player if you don't know. So, of course, it's been a very tragic and sad year for the Post Pioneers. Just about a month ago, just after the Hofstra game, they lost their star defensive back, Fred Kemp. And now, uh, as we have the ambulance arriving on the scene, we'll be right back. You're watching College Football on Sports Channel. Quarter, but we have an injured player, Jeff Doyle, the quarterback for Post, still down on the field being attended to. And the backup quarterback is Bobby Truman. You see him there warming up. Truman is a 6'2", 215-pound sophomore from Mediola, the same high school, by the way, that produced Scott Cessney. And this year he has passed 17 for 39, only 42% completion for 219 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, and has been sacked five times. Great number. Great number. You like number 13? That was yours for so many years. <laughs> Just, you hate to see this again. We, we don't want to speculate as to what the extent of the injury is. Matt Lockman was over there, and uh, in due time, I'm sure he'll have something to tell us about uh, what they have been talking about over there. Bobby Truman, like Jeff Doyle, was a transfer from Nassau Community College, where they play some outstanding football. By the way, they're six and zero and ranked number one in the nation among junior colleges, and they'll be playing tonight out in Nassau County. Doyle, a big boy, 6'3", 190, and you've you got to like the way he's been running the football today, and he... he bench, examine him a little further, and then make a determination as to whether or not they will have to take him to a local hospital for some more x-rays. But everything appears to be okay. He's alert. His teammates are asking him how he feels. He says, I feel fine. He just feels a little woozy, understandably, but things appear to be okay for Jeff Doyle. Matt Barry Landry's back up here in the booth. Is it a neck injury? We haven't had no confirmation as the nature of the injury. That's the one thing, Barry, that the doctors want to ascertain. They have immobilized his neck. They have not taken his helmet off because they want to make sure that they don't do any possible damage if in fact there is a neck problem but it appears as if that's the area that they're focusing on right now the extent of any injury they're not sure of right now apparently he's able to move his legs and that's a positive sign anything uh, that might be serious Matt, that, Matt did they say what happened was it when his head hit the turf they have not said anything any attempts uh, that I made to try and get some information uh, Dave was basically rebuffed by like we're mostly concerned with Jeff and uh, we'll answer some of those extra questions a little later on but uh, I wasn't sure whether or not it was upon hitting the turf or upon receiving a hit that Doyle was in. And as he gets inside the 45, down around the 41-yard line, he's brought down, setting up a second down play. Scott Bider, the linebacker, number 57, to have the tackle. You know, with that last drive, the way the post pioneers used their passing game, uh, you watch now the defensive backfield of St. John's, and they're so far off the ball. Right now, the, the cornerback down on this side is Travis Oselmo. He's up close, but the other two, uh, two of the other defensive backs are back. Now they're all backing off. Now DeLillo lines up as a wing, single setback is the offer. 
Cobb oh. gets the call again on the draft. Cobb wrestles him down. Kenny Cobb, the consummate nose tackle. John Sackinger did a great job last week to Myota stopping the uh, post running attack. And Kenny Cobb also, like Sackinger, a great defensive player. Remember the first half you saw him go down with what appeared to be a left leg injury. But Cobb, you'll see him on the right side of the screen come in right there. He's a tough player, Cobb is. He bench presses 442 pounds. It's even more than I can. First down and more as he cracks inside the 35 to around the 32 yard line. So using his six foot, 210 pound frame, brought down by Pete Majeski, but not before he has the first down. So you talk about an explosive first step. It appeared almost that time that uh, he was off before the ball was even snapped and he was into the hole and then for the first down. He has four or five speed and can play the power game as well as go outside. Once again, this, this is looking like the first half. Long drive by Post. Bobby Truman keeping it on the ground. Remember, they still have to win. St. John's will have to win in the fourth quarter. Good for them to get a score here. Calling an audible now. Got moving defensively. Out to Schroeder. Diving catch. He won't get much. Maybe about three or four yards on the play. Notice that was a very short pass. What you like to do when a new quarterback comes in the game. Get him started with a short pass to get the confidence, get the feeling going. Because again, Truman hasn't been in here uh, for the whole game. He just came in a couple of plays ago. Start him off with a short pass. And then ready to is, is Schroeder. He'll be on the right side. Just a quick stop back. And there he is. Good job going down for the ball rather than trying to reach it. Mike Cunningham in the ball game as a defensive end for St. John's, number 59. Replacing Frank Palowski. Now Bobby Truman doesn't like what he sees, so he has called one of post three timeouts for the second half. And remember, they were forced to do that in the first half, called a timeout. Didn't hurt them because they didn't end up uh, driving downfield in the closing second. So timeout with 3.16 to go here in the third quarter. St. John's leading it 28-21. Recapping the scoring, St. John's getting on the board first. This is before time. Be alert for it. And the other thing is, we had a nice stop in the four, and we again were grabbing. All we have to do now is tackle. We got them if we tackle. We got a rock. We just can't be playing big with our bodies. We got to go right with one back from one. Okay. Okay. Let's go. 55. Watch the waggle of Delo. Delo's talking to the quarterback. Yeah, right 55 now. pitch. Watch it back. In this set, when Delo's offset, watch the trap, the trap, or the ice. Okay. 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 Trap or ice. 55 pitch. 55 pitch. Right. Free catch. Yeah. came back in. Ryan McCall, the defensive coordinator. Did you get all that stuff? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on there. And I liked what he said. DeLillo's talking to the coach. He's talking to the quarterback. So uh, keep an eye on DeLillo. We'll give you that scoring summary a little bit later on. Back to the action here. Second down. Bobby Truman. He took over from Jeff Doyle, who was injured in the third quarter. Good time. Cunningham chasing him to the sideline, throws on the run, incomplete. Schroeder was the intended receiver, but a lot of red shirts, including Nevis and Conway, over there for St. John. Good coverage by the defensive backfield, because Truman had nowhere to go. He was trying to unload the ball, but he didn't want to just throw it into coverage. So he rolled out to his right, and then, then realized, hey, I've just got to get rid of it. So good coverage by the backfield of the St. John's Redmond. Clock stops with 3.08 to go here in the third quarter. St. John's jumped off to the early lead, assessed it to McDermott, a 22-yard pass. The offer tied it for post. And then to Santos, the offer, to Santos, the offer. Each score touchdowns and half a tunnel. 14 yard pass, the difference right now. Sussman hitting his second TD pass of the game. Behind Carroll, he's got a couple of blockers out there. Truman upended. What a play by Vince O'Grady as he got a piece of him. Caught off the tackle, made the stop, shy of the first down. Well, we saw Doyle in the first half and in the third quarter rolling out to left and running the ball. It appeared that Truman wanted to throw it, but O'Grady came up, and now it appears that uh, Post is going to go for it on fourth down. Remember, at the end of the first half, they went for it on fourth down, didn't make it. Oh, so, uh, this is a big, another big play. I think what uh, Coach Marshall is saying is we want to stay in this ball game, and, and we're going to go for it, but they're not strong as a passing team. Fourth and about four, working out of the eyes. 
Chiapa. Trying for the first down, and look at the second effort as he gets the first down inside the 20, fumbles the football, and let's see, it appears that Post has the ball. And remember what Fran McCall was saying in that defense of early, he said, we just can't play big with our bodies, we gotta wrap them up. Well, that time, St. John's did not wrap up the ball carry, a good second e effort for the first down. Again, Diarpo, now watch him get hit here, but they don't wrap him up. Gets hit, gets hit, he keeps going. Good balance, good balance. Krug comes in late, there's the fumble, but... Diarpo's carried 28 times for 145 yards. First and 10 for Post, trying to tie up the ball game. A minute 50 to go here in the third quarter. Again, Diarpo. Scotty tackling by the Redmen. They had a man in the backfield. He slipped that tackle. Finally, Scott Biter brought him down, but not before he picked up a beat about five or six yards on the play. That's been a problem that St. John's defensively has had. Their tackling has uh, been uh, not quite as good as uh, the coaching staff would like. They have given up 161 yards rushing and 150 yards passing. Of course, this, this version of San Diego Chargers East, uh, normally it's they're, they're in a position where they're just going to outscore their opponents anyway. Last week, they gave up almost 500 yards to the Merchant Marine Academy. They won that game, 65-45. Second and let's call it four. The arc again. Ooh, slammed as he got to the line of scrimmage. Big hit, I believe Omar Gonzalez, 99, hit him first. He bounced off of that and was uh, down at around the 11 or 12 yard line. And of course, right in there is number 64, Kenny Cobb, who kind of plugged things up and there was no hoof in which to run. Now again, we got a third down and short situation. See if they come in that full house backfield, that power eye formation. Schroeder has left the ball game. I didn't see Curtis come in. We'll see if they do come with it. 35 seconds left. Curtis is in the ball game now. Double tight end. Curtis lines up, however, as a wing to the right side. Diarpa hit at the line of scrimmage, falls forward, did not get the first down. Wrapped up by Scott Bider, the inside linebacker, number 57, who won a starting job middle of the season. And has done a real good job this afternoon. Filled the hole nicely. Uh, probably going to have to bring in a change to measure. And if, uh, if Post won forward on fourth down last time, I'm sure they'll go again this time. But watch Bider, number 57. He'll come from the right side of your screen, just filling the hole. Bang. Good job finding off the block, too. So, another third down play coming here for the Pioneers. Looks like a timeout has been called here, but a measurement. Now they're going to bring the chains in. Three quarters of a yard. Two thirds or inches. How would you put it there? Close. 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 Shows just one second left, but that apparently is the end of the third quarter. So that is it. We'll have a big third down play when we return. Watching college football. suffer a neck injury, the extent of which will not be known until x-rays are taken. No neurological damage, which is the most important consideration. He's been taken to Booth Memorial Hospital for those x-rays, and when those x-rays are uh, finally taken, we'll know how badly the neck injury is, but that's the extent of the injury to Jeff Doyle. Thank you, Matt. Fourth down and inches as we begin the fourth quarter. Biggest play of the ball game for Post. Trailing by seven. Our backfield, they went to Hillow, and the upper back there. 
Delillo diving. And let's see if he got it. Had to pick up just inches. Had to get uh, inside the 10. And he did make it. So Rob Delillo comes up with the key first down. Scott Biter, one of the men on the hit. But Delillo stretching out and just getting the first down. You know, the score as it is right now, do you start thinking about a two-point conversion on a touchdown? Well, it's early right now, obviously, with a lot of time left. Pete Porcelli. Now it looks like there's some confusion. They may not have the right number of players. They may be forced to take another time out here, and apparently they will. Well, that could come down to hurt them at the end of the ball game. That's the second time out that they have sort of wasted here. Again, you may say, well, you've got an inexperienced quarterback in there, Bobby Truman, who hasn't been uh, at the helm too often, but uh, Post is forced to take another time out right here. Coach Marshall talking to him now. Again, you, you're not talking too much strategy. You're just trying to see, you know, see what happened. Guess you just tuned in. St. John's led early 7-0. Post tied it at 7 apiece. Then uh, St. John's led 14-7. Post tied it at 14 apiece. Redmond took the lead 21-14. to don't forget next week, yours truly, along with Dave Jennings and Carl Reuter, will be back as we bring you the Stony Brook Kings Point Merchant Marine Academy. Our first look at Dennis Barrett's club came in action today down at Hofstra with a record of four and one. Where is uh, where is Carl these days? Barry? Carl is vacationing somewhere in the uh, How can Caribbean. He vacation? How can he vacation? Great game like this. Good drive that started at the 25-yard line. Bobby Truman on first down. And goal to go. Delillo hit by Cunningham by Charles Ford. Also hit by Scott Ryder. This is where CW Post has the big advantage. They get inside the 10 unless they self-destruct. Now last week they had a problem in there. Was it a first and goal? Dave Shanahan fumbled as he was going into the end zone. It cost him a touchdown. He only wound up with two points. A safety by John Lavellis. Now they'll go with the power backfield as Brett Curtis is in the ball game along with Rob Delillo. This is a Diapa. And they strung it out at the five yard line. He's brought down. Something that you, a little bit of a surprise. Post going away from their power game and running a sweep, a speed type of run. St. John's was there to answer the call, setting up a third and a little more than four. And it, it gets kind of interesting down here now. Because, uh, again, you could say, well, four yards uh, isn't a power game, not on third down, but on second down it could have been. Bobby Schroeder will check in with a play from the sideline. Curtis goes out. So they will go with two wide receivers on this play. Now they've got the tight end on the left side. Ray Thomas, 17th play of this drive on third and goal. Delillo and Diarpa are the running back. Diarpa behind Delillo, cuts it outside, bounces to the goal line, and he's in. Third touchdown run for Steve Diarpa. It's 28-27. Check it, the fourth touchdown run for the Arpa. And the Pioneers with a very nice 75-yard drive within a point of time. Just before that uh, play started, I said Fitzroy Thomas moves over on the left, and that's who they ran right behind. Uh, good size on that side and a good uh, good block by the fullback for the touchdown. Wayne Liebert to try to tie it here. Ball is up. And we have a tie ball game with 13.05 to go in the fourth quarter. Okay, this game is going pretty much exactly as we had thought. Running, pounding, ball controlled by post, couple of big plays by St. John's, and you know, you look at a couple of plays that have hurt that man right there, Tom Marshall, couple penalties uh, on that uh, in the third quarter, really hurt. And the, and the kickoff return for the touchdown. Now, he's gonna be coming right at you, and this is where Fitzroy Thomas is, number 89 right there, handling O'Grady. Breaking a tackle again, not wrapping up and getting into the end zone. A 
again, not to belabor the point, you heard Fran McCall talk about wrapping up the body, and shoddy tackling has hurt St. John's. Number 89, Fitzroy Thomas right there. Bobby Schroeder trying to finish off a block. And for Post, it's the most points that they've scored all year. But St. John's does give up a lot of points to the opposition. They came in averaging 43 points and uh, giving up about uh, over 20 a game. Something you pointed out earlier, St. John's will have the win here in the fourth quarter, which helps them as a passing team. Brian Hamel will be kicking into the win. And DeSantis and Conway at about the 20-yard line. This one will come to Conway at the 24. Not a big return, only about a 10-yard return to the 34-yard line. Post got down there real quick, and 92 with Scott Hicks, the defensive end. Well, again, if you can get the ball, that young man's excited, don't you think? <laughs> a little bit. He's excited, so is our fans. 17 play, 75 yards. Look at the time elapsed, 9:21. And Bianco finishing it off with a four-yard run, his fourth touchdown of the day. Look at that. Redman trying to keep that undefeated record. 6-0, and, and they're in trouble right here in this tie ball game. Casantis taken down in the backfield. John Lavellis, check it, James Buckner, number 98, showing some great quickness there. Well, he came across and made, did a great job, and that's something that uh, uh, right now Post is saying, hey, we want that ball back because we want to... Uh, you know, we want to march it down the field. Good play on first down. Here's the pitch to Zasanis. Great block there by the young fullback. But Buckner comes in. Look at that tackle. Wraps him right up, brings him down. Redmond with second and about 12. Cessna 9 for 15, only 111 yards and two touchdowns. We go to the air again. Up the middle, overthrows his man, nearly intercepted. McEntee got a piece of it. Nelback was there also. The intended receiver was Anthony Amalfitano. And Amalfitano almost came in and made the reception after McEntee knocked it up in the air. <laughs> Again, the pass was a little high. Says the, when he's throwing with the wind, the ball does have a habit of carrying. Now watch it get knocked up in the air. And, oh, almost. Close, but no cigar. McEntee making a nice play on the ball. He's an excellent free safety. First has 10 interceptions on the year. Had three last week against Iona. Third and 12. Russo was coming, they made a nice block on him. Tisantis breaks a check, and Holland breaks the tackle, but will be stopped shy of the first down at the 40-yard line. And I'll tell you, Schaefer, Roy Schaefer, number 10, tried to block tackle, and it didn't work against the tight end, Holland, coming across, and it almost cost him, but Lavella's coming back in to make the tackle. There's number 13, tight end, Kevin Holland. Fourth down, and Tricario will punt from the 25. No back to single safety, standing back at his own 25. Tricario has averaged 33 yards. The kick goes down. There will be a flag thrown on the play, running into the kicker, perhaps. Look at Nelback finally pick up the ball at around the six-yard line, but it won't matter. And he, he went down to his knee on the five. When he picked it up, they should have blown it dead at the five. And let's see if the official will, but it's running into the kicker against Post. Another big penalty, and onto the field marches the St. John's offense. Another turnover, if you will, because they would have had the football. Absolutely. Anthony Mondrone, captain of the special teams, number 56, I believe, is the guilty party. What you have to do when you're trying to block a punt, you don't go at the punter, you go at his release point where you think the ball is going to go. That way, if you don't get the ball, you don't get the punter. And that was fourth and a little less than five, so if it's just a five-yard penalty, it's going to be a first down regardless. Here Running into the kicker on the defense. First down, five-yard penalty. Now, again, you'll see it here. What you want is go to the spot around the 29-yard line. But up in the air, has no chance of getting the ball. And even if you get blocked into the kicker in college, it's still a penalty. In the pros, if you get blocked into the, pen, in, in the punter, you do get an exemption, but not in the NCAAs. So St. John's up at the 45 and a half yard line. Let's call it the 46, first and 10, with 11.23 to go in the fourth quarter, tied at 28. <laughs> 
Hernandez to Vicar. He can throw the football, throws it to Cessny, complete. Cessny gets two yards, maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and a flag is thrown on the play. Well, and, and late flags, not sure what they were. See if it's a clip against St. John's. Well, that play has been set up by a couple of reverses early in the game that were not passes, that were clear reverses, but they came to the same side of the field. As we mentioned earlier, Villar was a quarterback in high school. Clipping, offense, 15-yard penalty, first and 25. Now, now this 15-yard penalty for clipping will not hurt. Now, again, in the pros, see, now notice how, how Cesney hands the ball off after taking a direct snap. In college, you can become a receiver, the quarterback, by taking the direct snap. Let's look for the clip here. Maybe, maybe not. In the pros, the only way a quarterback can be an eligible receiver, he's got to take the, sh the snap in a shotgun style. That was only the third penalty against St. John's for 35 yards. They have been pretty much penalty free throughout the year. Sesame on first and 25. Looking up the middle for McDermott, underthrows and nearly picked off by Tim McEntee. McEntee, the safety that time, playing center field, was reading Sesney, and Sesney, of course, likes to go to uh, McDermott, and that's who he was reading. I'm off the tunnel, not in the game right now. Uh, Jason Diller is, he's the other wide receiver. Again, on the left side of your screen, well, you won't see it, but McDermott's just running a post pattern. And there's the pass. Here, here comes the safety. Nice play by Mack. And he's just reading it all the way. Just breaks on the ball, makes the play. There he is. He's a great athlete. Mack, he has three interceptions, had one last week against Iona. Last year, had seven interceptions. He's an outstanding lacrosse player, an All-American player. Movement in the line. You see Russo. You see DeSantis went in motion and... We'll have to see who this is against, but DeSantis went in motion, and that's when everything happened. But we've got illegal motion against uh, against St. John's, and now they're doing something with the third post. They're going backwards. It'll be second and 30. Bob Rico was telling us to play the game. No motion. No motion. This club has done well. And stay away from penalties. First start, offense. And the other thing is be healthy. They're not a very deep club as far as depth. So the same identical play. And St. John's faced with second and 30. What do you call when it's second and 30? Screen pass. What you, well, that's what you often see. That's a Dallas Cowboys type of play. <laughs> but you don't try to get 30 in two plays. Chop it up and get 15 in two. I mean, 30 in one play. Sesney with time. Going out for Tessetis. Batted down. Engelhart. Or check it. Scott Mankin, number 35. Mankin with a good defensive play. He had three interceptions last week against Iona. Real nice job by Mankin that time. Of course, you know when it's third and 30 that uh, uh, it's, it's, you don't have to play the short stuff. You can play it a little softer. Just a nice athletic play by Mankin. Again, to Samus, as we've talked about, good receiver out of the backfield. And now, the, the one thing Post can't do is they got to believe they're going to get the ball. They can't have a penalty which gives St. John's a first down. Now Fatana will line up as a flanker to the right, McDermott to the left. He'll draw double coverage on that side. Third and 30. That's Kevin Holland in motion. Kessney throwing up the middle. Mimna with the interception. Was his knee down? Yes, the rule is knee down at the 48-yard line. Her body was down. Something the St. John's fans haven't seen a whole lot. Fifth interception for Cessney this year. And that was a play that was really set up by the clip. And by the here's Cessney dropping back, having to go for a long way, looking for McDermott. Looking for McDermott. Overthrown. And there's the man of the hour, James Mimnaw. He had a big sack late in the first half, you'll recall. Comes up with a big, big, big play. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Two big plays, and now that's a turnover. Is that, that's the first one for St. John's today. And they have been plus 16 in the takeaway giveaway department. Well, the Pioneers' Bobby Truba, they took over in the third quarter when Jeff Doyle's starting quarterback was injured. He's trying to engineer the drive to put his club in front here. He's got DeLillo and Diapa. This is Diapa. And 
tackled at the line of scrimmage. Scott Fighter, number 57. Here the Truman had a little trouble getting the ball from center. Again, keep in mind, let's go back to that last interception. If the ball is caught and you're on the ground, you can't get up and run with the ball. Paul just throw a little bit wide. Look at him go down. They're not going down to the ground and covering it up. I often talk about catching the ball with your hand, but when it's that low as a receiver or any kind of person catching the pass, don't be afraid to go down so you can protect yourself and you do an easier job catching the ball. That was Mendoz's third interception of the year. None bigger than that one. Second and ten from the 45. Truman, play action with time. Throwing tip incomplete. It was intended for Radcliffe. Steve Nieves was over there along with Scott Bider. Boy, bider has been all over the field. A lot of tip passes today. A lot of tip passes, especially those over the middle. Of the linebackers dropping back into a position where they can tip those balls. And the linebackers are just short of the receivers. And the quarterback, they, the way they look at it, they look at a particular plane. The linebackers aren't in that plane. So it's throw the ball to the receiver, and there's the linebacker. Game is tied at 28 apiece. 9.44 to go here in the fourth quarter. Third and 10. Come on, 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 Boy, just like McEntee before when he made the nice break, playing it deep, and <laughs> he's running off the field with the ball. Meanwhile, there are about 20 guys back on the 40-yard line. Maybe they're all looking for it. Look at him. <laughs> hey, Krug's over here with the ball, fellas. But a great break. <laughs> That's cute. Everybody looking on. What's happening out there? You see the concerned look of the crowd. There's John Krug, the captain. He's the deep safety. He's just playing deep, reading the quarterback. Now make your break. Come up and get the ball. Now, notice the receiver does not come back to the ball. Anthony Pergola not realizing personal Krug foul is there. On St. John's. The dead ball, personal foul, CW post. First down, St. John's. That's a watch. So John Krug has had an inconsistent season as we watch him pick this one off here. His second interception of the year. He's coming up, and that's why a receiver has to come back to the ball. Must come back so you can you can almost screen out or box out the defensive back. The one good turnover deserves another. So the Redmen trying to take the lead. Blitz coming. He gets it off. Looking for a Mafetano. Diving catch and a beauty at the 46-yard line. What a great play by that young man, Mafetano. And St. John's picking up the blitz that time. I believe it was John Hogan coming up the middle. But Scott says he's just backing up, releasing the ball, and letting Amalfitano run under. Re remember, when you do have, there's a nice pickup. When you do have blitz, there's man-to-man -man coverage, single coverage. Amalfitano goes for it, lays out. Great catch. Look at him, clutching that ball. Nice job. Art Nelback was the man defending number 46. So the Redmond now at the 46-yard line. 22-yard pass play. On the draw play, Casanis gets it inside and fouls inside the 40 for around the 38-yard line. Art Nelback and Steve Smalley bringing him down, but he picked up a big gainer on that. Looked more like the first half of Manny DeSantis who was running for big games. Something I referred to earlier but didn't really expand on is that the third down conversion is an overrated statistic. The big one is the first down efficiency. Here's second and two. A big first down play. Now St. John's is in charge of what they can do here. DeSantis has gone off the 100-yard bounce. 12 carries for 103 yards. <laughs> Uh, the quarterback keeper, Sesney, has the first down as he got to the 35. 8.35 to go, fourth quarter. The Redmond have never trailed in this game. They led 7-0. Led 28-21. Post came back to tie it. Uh, the fourth touchdown run of the game by Steve Diopolis. That Sesney has thrown for a couple of TD passes for St. John's. Now what St. John's ideally would like to do here with unofficially eight and a half left in the fourth quarter, use some time up and score and force Post to have to rush their next drive. <laughs> <laughs> free reading over there. DeSantis, nice hole. Spun around and brought down by James Mimna. Otherwise, he might have been off to the races. He had a head of steam up. Again, first down being successful for the Redmen. 
And we're watching a team run the ball effectively against the post defense, which no one really has done all year. Clock ticking. Second and one. You see, keep an eye on. So see how he watches the defense. He wants to see where everybody is reading any type of blitz in case he has to have them. Look at post. They're all up on the line. They're probably just camouflaging that. Leslie under some severe pressure, runs away from Lavellis and will run out of bounds, has the first down. Scott Mankin and John Lavellis were pursuing him in the backfield and Cessney showing some foot speed got away and got out of bounds. That's one reason why you do want to look at the defense. Maybe the CW Post was not camouflaging. Often when you get a couple players up in the gaps, they're just trying to confuse the quarterback and they will drop out late. That time they didn't and Cessney said, hey boys, I'll see you later. <laughs> Scott Cessney doing it with his feet as well as his arm. Number one in the nation in the latest NCAA poll of efficiency as a quarterback. Could have seen ahead here. It's 7.25 to go in the fourth quarter. Dermot's son recovered. Keep it on the ground. Cassandra stripped up in the backfield. James Mimnar doing it again. He's had some game for C.W. Post. He's come up with some very, very big plays at the end of the first half and here in the second half. These two guys were teammates in high school at Kamsawag High School out of Long Island here. What, what was the name of that? Kamsawag. See, now here's it. Oh, he's got him by the belt. Got him by the belt. That's how you wrap him up. Yeah, that's you got a way to treat your friend. You gotta, I mean, you <laughs> can't go without your belt and your slacks, folks. Second and long, and Sesky will go to the air. Has time, can't find a receiver. And is down as he got inside the 25, around the 24, Chris Russo and John Hogan. And that time, Art Nelback did a good job covering Anthony Amalfitano, who ran down that post corner, which is a play that takes a while to develop, and Nelback did not go for the post move that time. Anthony Chicario, who missed a field goal late in the first half, getting ready, warming up over there. And he has picked a long run of 48 yards. He'll have the win. Him. From the back, he looks a little bit like a goose, and now St. John's going to call a timeout. That's the first of their three timeouts. Clock stops with 6.19 to go, and the Brain Trust will come, try to come up with a big third and 11 play here as Bob Rickett talks it over with Scott Sessler. Yeah, there's a motor oil that talks about quality, always has, always will. Well, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any automobile manufacturer. Oh yeah, unlike the competition, Valvoline now has a $2 check that works just like cash when you buy six quarts or more of Valvoline motor oil at any Napa Auto Parts store. Look for your Valvoline check in magazines or your mailbox. Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Back at Hofstra State, or back at <laughs> St. John's University, Barry Landers, Dave Jennings, where the Redmen and the Post Pioneers are deadlocked 28 apiece. We've got a big third and 10 play coming up as St. John's uh, talks it over. Scott Cessney, 11 for 21, 140 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. As he sends McDermott out to the left, Roy Schaefer will help out of the coverage there. Now he has single coverage the angle hut. Sesney looking deep. He's got McDermott wide open out there. Batted away as Engelhardt came back on the play and knocked it down. And I'll tell you, that was a bad throw that time by Sesney because you had uh, McDermott running that post corner. That's a favorite pattern of these receivers. Now we're going to have what appears to be a field goal, but it was not a good throw. As you said, McDermott was wide open. We won't see it, but this ball floats even though he's got the wind in his back. And it gives uh, Nelbach a, a chance to come back. See how far he's beaten? He's really beaten that time. Engelhardt, I'm sorry. Engelhardt, number 34. And uh, he was for that. Post corner pattern is a big pattern that St. John's likes to use. 42-yard attempt. Sean Bannon, the holder. He had missed a 52-yarder late in the first half. This will put St. John's in front. High snap. Kikirio's kick is on the way. It is good! 
and St. John's leads it 31-28 with 6.05 to play. Well, the good news for, for Post is it was only three points and also 6.05 left plenty of time, and that's a fine kick by that young man. Pressure kick from the young man who had a disappointing two seasons after starring as a freshman. He's come back this year and I saw a great job. Also, as you pointed out, as it was a live kick, it was a it was a high snap, which which you shouldn't really it shouldn't throw you off because you should practice that on occasion. But uh, great job, Sean Bannon, getting it back down. Let's see if we can see the high snap. Look look at that good hand by Bannon reaching up, getting it down, so it doesn't really mess up the timing. And you tell me if this kicker likes this. Oh, he knows it's good. Look at Shakari knows it's good all the way. Even Pat Ragusa would have liked that one. Yeah, Ragusa wouldn't jump that high, though. They're enjoying it on the sidelines. Okay, John's trying to stay undefeated. Ranked number one in the region right here, along with Trenton State, the only two teams in the New York metropolitan area undefeated. The carryall will be kicking off to Brett Curtis and Stanley Dwight around the two-yard line. Tom Marshall. He's, you know, he's got to feel okay right now because he knows his team, if they get good field position on this, there's plenty of time for them to run it down. Right at the 10. Hit hard and brought down. He ran into a wall over there as he ran into number 67, Bobby Dunlop, the offensive guard playing on the special team. And he brought him down. And the two things that Post doesn't want to do, no penalties, no turnovers. It has hurt them in the past. I think they're in good position right now. Nine plays, 69 yards, three minutes, 32 seconds, and Tricario's field goal giving St. John's the three-point lead. Schroeder will come out to the top of your picture, and Pagola at the bottom of your picture as wide receivers. The offense a little over running back. Bobby Truman, pitch down, the offense. Puts it back inside, picks up about four, maybe five, as he crosses the 30 to around the 32-yard line. Discounting third and long situations, I would be surprised if you'd see a lot of passes here by CW Post. John Krug, Travis Osamo in on that last play. Now the Redmen make substitution changes. Frank Kalowski comes out of the ball game along with Robert McKinney. As they change up the defensive ends. There's the man who's put his club in front. Huh? Bobby Truman on second down. Off ticking with 5.18 to go in the fourth quarter. Post trailing by three. Play action. Looking up the middle. Nice reception at the 45-yard line. Radcliffe, the 5'7 freshman from Huntington Station, Long Island, with a catch. So much for my theory of uh, outside of third and ten not throwing the ball, but a good rifle throw into the wind. You know, I, I don't like to do this, but maybe I can get our guys to just get an isolated shot at Kenny Cobb, the nose tackle. I have never seen a nose tackle get that low uh, opposite the center. He's almost parallel to the ground, about a foot off the ground, trying to get his leverage. We <laughs> Look how low he is. Look at that. I mean, he is so low. I've never seen a nose tackle get that low before. Good camera shot. He's only six feet. On the draw, Diapa has a nice hole. He's into the secondary, close to the first down before he is brought down by John Krug. Good job, guys. So the clock now ticking with 4.35 to go. Post moving the ball effectively on the ground here. Now the officials want a timeout to measure. <laughs> Now again, you're that low, and notice the center takes him off to the right side, and where's the hole? Off to the left side. Last year, Steve DeArper ran for 184 yards against St. John's. This year, he's run for 175. <laughs> Boy, is that close. A couple of inches. Let's go. Well, again, as I, I, I would be, I, I said earlier, I thought Post was in good position right now. 434 unofficially on the clock, and they're down by three, and they're only 46 yards away. They're not thinking about getting in shape for a field goal, but what they'd like to do, especially knowing that St. John's is a big play team, they'd like to score with about one second to go. <laughs> They want to use up the clock, and they did that effectively on the drive that they tied the ball game up. They took about nine minutes on that last touchdown drive. So on second and inches, over a free play right here. Oh, 
Well, you're a good teacher. Delillo has the first down. Look at, Hans, look at that, they can't bring him down. Again, poor tackling by the Redmond as he broke what should have been a, maybe a one-yard pickup and got about seven or eight on the play. Finally, John Crew brought him down, but Delillo, a freight train there. You know, one thing that you like to do when you're a strong running team, that big offensive line, just power it up the middle. I remember Fran McCall saying, look, no wrap up there. Does he wrap him up there? Look at this. Look at this young man. He, oh, look at this. Look at Delillo's second effort. How many times you run the ball today? We'll get some stats for Jan Delillo in just a moment. But it is a first down for the Post Pioneers. The clock ticking. 3.57 to go. They trail by three. Schumann quick drops. Throws to Pergola. And Pergola wrestled down by Kevin Conway. Good open field coverage by Conway, who has been quite a story this year. Seven interceptions and has scored two touchdowns. One on an interception return last week. Well, that one in on first down just to keep St. John's uh, just a little bit wary of it. This is an interesting drive for Post. Colello has carried 12 times for 55 yards. Second and five with 3.23 to go. Keep an eye on that tight end right side for Troy Thomas. He's a good block and that right side is the stronger side of the two sides for Post. <laughs> Looked like movement. Delillo was moving. Flags are thrown. The opera will be stopped at around the 30-yard line. Well, if you notice Truman that time, it appeared as though he wanted it on the first hut because he moved and the ball wasn't there and several of his teammates moved. It's got to be a false start against uh, CW Post. And then he called it again. Let's see if we can keep an eye on the quarterback. He calls for it right there. See him move and the ball's late. Keith yes, yes, Porcelli, the center. John Krug, the captain, talking it over with the referee, Joe Coley. Take the play! Take the play! Take the play. Take the play. Take the play. Illegal motion, offense, penalty declined, third down. So a third and about seven. Let's call it seven, the ball at the 30, they've got to get to around the 23. What do you now, now here, this brings up an interesting play. Let's say they only get three or four yards. They're within field goal range, but going into the win, I think they've got two plays in which to get the six, seven yards. Bob comes alive here at Redmond Field. He's got time. Looking for the sideline out there. Fitzroy Thomas could not hang on. He had beaten Steve Nevis to the corner there, but the big tight end could not hang on to the football. He was there. He had the size. Just couldn't come down with the ball. Uh, I'll have to check up some uh, receiving stats here from Fitzroy Thomas. He's got five receptions. This, I'm sorry, four receptions for 39 yards. So he's a guy they don't go to a lot. And uh, Post is going to go for it here on fourth down. Well, here's the play. 2.40 to go. Fourth and seven from the 30. Post trails by three. Good protection, plenty of time up the middle. Incomplete, Schroeder could not hang on at the 15 yard line. Travis Osama was defending on the play. A well thrown pass, a well thrown pass, but again, not with the hands. You got to catch the ball with your hands, whether you go down or stay up. Bob Rick is happy. Uh, this game is not over, not over by any means. 234 left. Watch Schroeder come across the middle. Well, you'll see it from behind you. Schroeder's going to come in from the left side of your screen, go down for a low pass, and it's going to bounce off his chest or his hand, his uh, stomach or his chest. He had it, Dave. And just should have had it. Should have had it. So St. John with 2.34 to go, leading by three. DeSantis hit by Russo, fights forward for about a yard. And one thing about this drive here, Post only has one timeout left. They had to use two before, so this benefits St. John. Now also, there's no 25 second clock here, so that hurts St. John to some degree because they can't keep an eye on the clock as to when to snap the ball. They've got to guess as to when to snap it. 2 10 unofficially and running. Second, and let's call it seven. Again, working out of the eye. St. John's has only turned it over once today, and intercepted by Cesar. Long count. 
keep it on the ground to Sanders. Now, do you call a timeout now or wait till the next play? I think you have to wait till the next play. John Hogan getting in with a quick hit. As I said, now is when you call your timeout. But that's the last timeout. 147 left unofficially. A third down play coming up. So what St. John's can do, they can run the play, and then the, assuming it's not an incomplete pass, the clock will run. And if it is a punt on fourth down, assuming St. John's doesn't get the ball, does not get the first down, let's listen. Well, we better go. Let's go. Okay, you heard it sweep away from Lavellis. Lavellis usually winds up on the weak side, away from the tight end. The key thing here, uh, if they don't get the first down, stay in bounds, keep the clock running. Officially, there are two minutes left. We've just got the official word. Two minutes. It's 147 on the scoreboard clock, but that's unofficial. So now if Post stops St. John's here and the clock is still running, they should get the ball somewhere around a minute to go. Quick update out of town. Hofstra is leading Kings Point in the fourth quarter, 15-8, with four minutes to go. Stony Brook leading Stonehill, 34-31 in the fourth quarter. Now, if if St. John's obviously gets the first down, the ball game is over. What if it's fourth and one? Do they go for it? Yeah, interesting decision. Okay, look at guy see one of the blitz. They back off. Lavellis will try to stay in bounds, and he does. Clock will continue to tick. Lavellis was over there. Along with John Hogan. Now, Post likes to block the kicks. We mentioned earlier they blocked three punts this year. What do you think about the chance right here? You think they're going to come? Well, if the kicker plays this right, and they have to, they almost have to come on the block, the kicker should just want to get the ball out of there. Although, there are three men back, two very short and one deep. So, Post only has eight guys up, but the thing that Chicario has to realize, just get it out of there. You can't afford a block kick. The clock is running. Fifth punt. He's averaged 33 yards along the 47. He'll get this one away. See how he just got it out of there. Great kick. Nelback inside the 20. Nelback will be taken down by Kevin Conway. That's a great special team play by St. John's. An outstanding kick by Chicario and great coverage by Conway. 47 yards. It was a good high punt. You notice how he rushed to get it out of there. That is a great play. Now we do have a penalty flag down on the field. Now it is. Bobby Trumo with a moment of truth right here as a quarterback. Under pressure. Kalowski was after him. He throws a field. Tipped away by John Krug. Pergola was the intended receiver. And also over there was Kevin Conway. They, it's very different. This is a very difficult situation for Post because now they can't use their strength. Now they've got to go to the passing game. St. John's realizing this, just playing it deep and just reacting to the ball. Any ball that's thrown up there is going to hang up a little longer because of the wind. So it, right now, it's going, everything's in St. John's favor, but the game is not over. No timeouts, of course, remaining for Post. <laughs> against a free man rush. Going up the middle, he's got open for Zola, but he couldn't get the ball. John Krug again. Uh, St. John's is playing pretty deep. Open and juggled, held on to by Radcliffe. How did he hang on to the ball after taking a hit from Steve Nieves? Boy, well, Nieves did a, had an excellent shot, but what a catch and way to hold on to the ball, Radcliffe. The freshman is going to be a great receiver in the future. Clock is uh, now taking it. It's fourth down and a couple of uh, yards. 30 seconds unofficially on the clock. This is a play for uh, Post. They get the first down, but he stays in bounds, however. Schroeder making the catch. Clock shows 24 seconds. They'll reset the chains on the first down here. Post going without a huddle. Gives, it, gives Post an advantage. They can call the play in set. They're still some 63 yards away from Hager, although they need to feel tipped and nearly intercepted on the far side. Robert McKinney.
down to the final plays of the game. He's got another chance here. Rushing three, dropping Truman eight. deep downfield looking for Ratcliffe out there. Intercepted by St. John's, Kevin Conway. Penalty flag late, it appears to be a face mask. And the pictures tell the story. So St. John's comes up with the interception. We've been talking about their defense being a defense that gives up yardage but comes up with big plays defensively. They're 27. Here just cuts in front, and makes the interception. Look at the sideline. And there's the there's the uh, face mask. Shades of the Hofstra sideline last week when Larry Brady picked off. That. And that should be the.